Slide, a science fiction serial in seven parts by Victor Pemberton, with Morris Denham and Roger Delgado. The Slide, episode one, Moments of Silence. See the whole town from up here. Oh, really, Janet? Whew. We've climbed this hill hundreds of times. The way you carry on, you'd think we were the first ever to reach the summit. Mm. Oh, I haven't breathed air like this for weeks. I feel as though I'd been let out of a cage. Oh, well, we don't get heat waves in March every year, you know. You should be grateful for small mercies. Well, you want to be locked up in that classroom sometime. I thought I was going to suffocate the other day. The heat was unbearable. Oh, there's nothing I'd like better than being locked up in a classroom with my school teacher, especially this school teacher. <laughs> oh, look, Ken, there is the school. Doesn't it look an odd shape from up here? Yes, very odd. Rather beautiful, though, all that glass and concrete. Very futuristic. But then I suppose all the buildings are. Huh. Oh, you really hate Redlow, don't you, Ken? No, I just don't like new towns. They're too... Too impersonal. Well, that's because they are new. You have to give them time. Do you mean the buildings or the people? You are just a miserable, old-fashioned Londoner who resents progress. <laughs> I happen to think we owe Hugh Deverell an awful lot, all of us. Really? Any man who starts life by sweeping floors in a factory and ends up by building a town with his own money deserves every bit of admiration he can get. Well, I distrust the self-made man. Well, there are plenty of those who don't. That's why they put him into Parliament. <laughs> Just let me tell you this, my darling. If our marriage is going to work, we are going to have to make one or two radical changes in your political education. Ken! Hmm? Listen. Can't hear a thing. Precisely. Haven't you noticed how quiet it is? You can almost hear the silence. Imagination. L look at the grass. It's absolutely still. When we came up, there was a cool breeze. And I can't even hear the birds anymore. Not one single bird. Oh, at least you can see the English Channel. It's as clear as a bell. Ken, let's go. I hate this place. Hate it? But it's one of your favourites. Oh, it's the weather. I, I don't like it being like this. It, it scares me. I, I've had a headache all the week. Oh, Janet, why didn't you tell me, darling, getting yourself all worked up like this? Oh, I'll be all right if I can just get away from this place. The sun, it's so bright. It hurts my eyes. Yes, you really are under the weather, aren't you? Well, I tell you this. If you're not out of it by tonight, you're not going to any meeting at the town hall. Oh. Especially with the reception Hugh Deverell's going to get. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please. You tell me I took the farmer's land away from him. But, yes, that's true. But... But what did I give the farmer in return? Yes, I gave him a home. A place he could be proud to live in with his wife and children for the rest of his days. Now, when, 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 when I came to Ridlow ten years ago, it was a swamp in the middle of Kent. A haven of flies and field mice. But today, my friends... I have given you a standard of living unparalleled in the history of this nation. And Redlow New Town has become a giant in our new society. We, we, we have stepped well into the future before the future has begun. Well, do you condemn me for this? Darling, are you all right? You look gossip. I'm, I'm all right. It, it's just so hot in here. Well, then, for heaven's sake, let's go. Oh, no, I'm all right. Do you mind if I say something, Mr. Deverell? No, go right ahead, please, Mr. Wilson. Well, most of us in this hall tonight are farmers. That's right. We didn't ask you for one of your space-age towns. No. Some of us prefer the country the way it was. Yes, well done. <laughs> Open the, the doors or something. I, I can hardly breathe. It's stifling. Darling, I... your hands, they're like ice. Come on, let's get out of here. <laughs> Mr. Wilson! Mr. Wilson! Perhaps I can ask you a question if you'll allow me to. It's a free country, Mrs. Deverell. You don't have any children of your own, do you? Oh, I don't see Neither what... do I and my husband. 
That's one of the reasons why we think more about children than most people who do have them. Someone has to plan the children's future, Mr. Wilson, even if they're not our own. Yeah, and one man can do all that, can he? He can try, Mr. Wilson. He can try. Yeah. The creation of Redmo, ladies and gentlemen, is no lust for power. It is a dream of one man that came true. A dream of progress, not of stagnation. So, uh, what is it? What's going on at the back there? Janet, darling, come on now. Lift your head. What is it, Doctor? Has she fainted? Oh, they should have opened these doors. It's like a greenhouse in here. No, take it easy, darling. Just oh, no, take it easy. Oh, an ambulance. No, wait, wait, please. Please, out of the way there. Uh, what, what is it? What's happened? Oh, I'm sorry about this, sir. She's not feeling well. Ah. I am a doctor. I'll take her home. Well, you can use my car. Well, I have my own, thank you, Mr. Devil. If I can just get her out of the heat. Mm. Uh, would you mind moving back, please, yes, ladies and gentlemen? You must have a little more air. Back, back, back. Listen. Quiet. Everybody stand still for a minute. What is it, Doug? Well, there's something. Can't you hear it? I can't hear nothing. Oh, no, Kate. It's too late. Too late. Here, what is it? The chandelier. Look out for the chandelier! Get out! Everybody get out as quick as you can! Get back from the walls, but then come down! Tug! Tug Wilson, come over here! Help me with Janet! Oh, I can't, Doctor, I can't! The whole lot's got to cave in! What's out! <laughs> Excuse me, Inspector. It never stops. County Constabulary? Oh, yes, Doctor. Do what, sir? Are you sure? What is it? Uh, just a moment, please, Doctor. It's Doc Richards, sir. Yeah? He says they found a crack in the road in Holly Mill Lane. Back at Tug Wilson's farmhouse. Give us that. Hello, Doc? Yeah, Baxter. What's all this, then? Are you sure? Oh, come off it, Doc, haven't you heard? We don't have earthquakes in this country. A what? Right, ten minutes, then. Earthquakes in England? It's impossible. Is it? Then why is there a crack in Holly Mill Lane? A hundred yards long? Come on, Mrs. Wilson. <laughs> all over now. Oh, what a terrible thing. I, I thought the whole house was going to come down on top of me. <laughs> if somebody had told me yesterday I'd live to see earthquake in England, I wouldn't have believed him. Well, I'd say it's much more likely to be earth tremors than a natural quake tug. Except for that road being torn open like that. Well, I don't know what it was, but it scared the living daylights out of me. You're not the only one. I thought doctors were supposed to have stomachs of iron. Oh, don't you believe it. Earthquakes are the one thing in my life I can well do without. I've always had a dread of being near one. Yeah, you know, what beat me was that girl of yours. Oh, Janet? Yeah, screaming out in the middle of the hall like that. I can't make it out. She wasn't hit by anything. She has concussion. Yeah, but how? She went down long before the place started shaking. Yes, I know. Anyway, it's up to the hospital now. There's nothing I can do till I get their report. Watch out, Doctor, that tree! <laughs> Doc, Doc, are you all right? Oh, oh yeah. I, yes, I'm okay. That's it. Well, I'm not so sure if many of these trees start coming down. Get these people out of the way. Right, come on now, get back, please. You all right, Doc? Yeah, just about. Oh, take a look at that crack, will you? Yeah, I shouldn't go too near the edge of that gap. It's rather a long way down. Holly Mill Lane. What happened to all these uh, young elms along there? Well, you tell us. They've been ripped out the earth like a lot of weeds. Ah, well, let's have a look, then. Uh, how deep is this thing? Does anybody know? Oh, impossible to tell. But it's a good three feet across. Uh-huh. 
soil's uh, pretty loose. Well, that's the trouble. It destroys the bone all the way along. But quite a way down, too. Oh, is that bad? Soil's always damp, even an inch or so down. Well, they've had tremors all the way along the south coast from Plymouth right the way up as far as Margate. <laughs> Without any warning, either. I'm not so sure about that. Huh? What do you mean? Well, there's something Janet noticed up on that hill this morning. Yeah? The air became so thick and dull. With that silence, something was bound to happen. Silence? Well, if you lived out east, you'd know the meaning of that. There's always a, a moment of silence before an earthquake. Seems to be about the only warning nature's prepared to give. In some places, they hang little wind chimes outside the house. If they begin to flutter and there's no breeze, that's the time to run. Yes, but in England, we It'll don't... It'll teach us not to be so smug. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, it's up to the scientists now. Mr. Devil's got a couple of them on the way down from London. Let them sort it out, I say. <laughs> Come on, John. No, no, wait a minute, Inspector. Tell me, is there a, a stream near here? Stream? Oh, no. Not to my knowledge. Nearest is the Holly Mill River, but that's on the other side of town. Why? Just I thought I heard water, that's all. <laughs> Perhaps not. <laughs> More likely a broken water, man. No. No, I in fact... I'm not even sure it was water. I'll get it checked. Yes, do. We want to be prepared next time. Next time? Well, here it is, gentlemen. Our town hall. <laughs> not a very pretty sight. Well, I suppose we can think ourselves lucky we weren't killed. Yes, I should say we're very lucky, sir. In fact, I don't think there's any doubt that the force of these tremors was degree six. Degree hmm? six? Professor Landon, oh. what does that mean? It means, Mrs. Deverell, that even by international standards, the tremors were extremely powerful. They could be the start of a series of shocks. Oh, no. Uh, mind you, this is not a proven fact. Professor Lippitt merely suggests we must be prepared for the possibility. But I thought we weren't in an earthquake zone. Under normal circumstances, we're not. The most the British Isles ever feel are a few shock waves. But there's no doubt on this occasion, the seismographs show quite clearly degree six. Oh, don't seismographs ever go wrong? Well, no, uh, Mr. Uh, Deverell, never. They may haggle a little, but they do not go yes. wrong. Uh. The uh, type of the damage in this hall alone is the sort of thing you'd normally expect to find in a severe quake area. Plus the fact that an actual crevasse has occurred in the Earth's crust. It's a unique situation. Unique? I find it terrifying. <laughs> ah, there you are, Inspector. Uh, what's the news? Ah, oh, he's calming down a bit now, sir. People seem to be uh, more shocked than anything else. Uh, damage? Uh, pretty extensive. When the Earth begins to move, everything moves with it. Oh, Inspector, this is Professor Landers and Professor Lippert. Yes, How do you do, Now, uh, first thing in the morning, they'll want to inspect the crack in Holly Mill Lane. I leave it to you to see that they're offered every facility. Very good, sir. Uh, and, Inspector? Um, sir? I also leave it to you to see that the town is back in working order as quickly as possible. Me, sir. Isn't that up to the chief? Look, no, get as many working parties together as you can. I don't care how. If necessary, call on the commanding officer at RAF Redlow. Does he need authority from Whitehall, sir? Let me worry about authority, Inspector, not you. Good night. Good night, sir. Phew. Huh? That was most unnecessary. You know very well it's not Baxter's job. Baxter to... has only me to thank for the job he holds today. If he doesn't like the way I do things, he knows very well he can go back to the beat where I found it. But him. you... Right, gentlemen, now, what next? Uh, we suggest you advise Whitehall immediately, sir. Ah, Whitehall, Whitehall, what on earth for? Redlow is my responsibility. Uh, Mr. Deverall, I think you and your colleagues should know that these tremors down here were not entirely unexpected. What? Professor, you mean you knew this was going to happen? And you didn't tell us? We knew sooner or later there was going to be a seismological disturbance somewhere in southern England. The thing we did not know was where and when. Uh, but one man did, or at least he had a rough idea. Uh, what man? A young seismologist from Chile in South America. He's done quite a lot of research in his own country. He worked with Lippitt here for a time in geology at London University. Mm -hmm. Brilliant mind. But what made him forecast these tremors? Well, um, I, I don't know if you remember some years ago, uh, people in Dover and Folkestone getting all worked up about a series of explosions they were hearing out at sea in the English Channel, uh, usually in the middle of the night. Yes, I do remember vaguely. Didn't they think they were unexploded mines or something? Uh, that's right. But, but nobody could find anything, not even the Royal Navy. That's uh, why they called on us blokes. Uh, we sent down a team, and so did the French, but still nothing. Uh, at the 
time, we took very little notice. After all, the turbulence is mentioned in manuscripts dating back as far as the 12th century. I hadn't realized that. Uh, yes, well, uh, anyhow, this uh, Chilean bloke decided to go and have a look for himself. He, he made his first dive to the seabed about three miles out from Dover. It took him uh, quite a few days, but what he eventually found out there shattered me, I can tell you, and, and quite a few others, too. Mm. Indeed. Yeah, so much so that nobody believed him. They didn't want to. Uh, not the Royal Institute, nor even Professor Landers here. Well, then, if this man can help us, let's make it worth his while to come here right away. <laughs> Only science will get Gomez here, Mr. Deverell, not money. Oh, did you say Gomez? Uh, Professor Gomez, yes. Then it's out of the question. Is there anyone else? What's wrong with Gomez? He's the only one... Joseph can... Gomez has a long record of dubious political activity. It would be unwise to expose him to public scrutiny, particularly in Red Lake. Oh, that's nonsense. Joseph's nothing more than a pacifist. He's no more politically minded than I am. I'm sorry, I cannot take the risk. Darling, you've got to. Hmm? Well, we have no choice. If the town's going to get another shaking like this, this man may at least be able to prepare us for it. Uh. Gentlemen, where is this Professor Gomez? How soon can we get hold of him? He's usually attached to the University of Santiago. Uh, no, he's over in Zurich at the moment attending a conference. We could probably get him over by the morning if he's interested enough. No, I absolutely forbid it. I will not have Gomez in this town. Very well, Mr. Deverell. But let me warn you, the whole nation is stunned by this appalling freak of nature. By tomorrow morning, there will be hardly a newspaper in the country that will not be buzzing with speculation of fear for the future. They and the people of this town have the right to know what they can expect, the chance to prepare for any eventuality. Are you going to deny them that right? Because it's up to you, Mr. Deverell. It is up to you. Announce the arrival of their flight number 374 from Rome and Zurich. Joseph! Joseph, you old devil! There you oh, are! John! John, it's good to see you again. And British Professor British Landers, British how are you, sir? Welcome back, Joseph. <laughs> thank you for coming. Oh, thank you for asking me. Uh, Joseph, I want you to meet Mr. Hugh Devil. Mm. Uh, we shall be working quite closely with him. How do you do, sir? Uh, Professor Gomez, thank you for coming. I've uh, heard a lot about you. I've heard a lot about you, sir. Hmm. I look forward to seeing your new town. I hear it is quite remarkable. Really? Well, I hope we shan't have to detain you any longer than is absolutely necessary. I'm sure you'll be most eager to return to your own work. Oh, my work is where science takes me, Mr. Deverell. There are no boundaries. Oh, good. Good. Well, follow me, please. Richard I have a car waiting. Airways, flight number 374 from Rome and Jury. that the Royal Institute's Department of Geology had recorded last night's tremors as force six degrees. Oh, force A spokesman six. for the Royal oh, Institute goodness. told our correspondent this was the highest ever recorded in British seismological disturbances. Well, I never. Meanwhile, in oh, the... Oh, God, they've got it on telly! The bewildered residents were still mopping up after a night of havoc and chaos. You're missing it! It was oh. announced this oh. evening that Mr. Hugh Deverell, MP, Chairman of the Deverell Foundation will launch an immediate appeal to the government for financial and other aid to compensate those distressed by damage and personal ah. injury. Oh, Tug, what you do that for? I was watching the news. I don't want to hear no more news, especially about Deverell. They had pictures of Redlow. I, I saw him, Mrs. Luke. <laughs> that must have been nice for you. We won't hear the last of that. I reckon we'll get compensation, you know. Everybody seems to think so. Well, I'm not paying for all these broken windows, that's for sure. And what's up with him tonight? I don't know. He's been going on like that all day. Can't be hungry. I only fed him at half past seven. Shut up, will you, Mickey? Blasted nuisance. Go and see what's wrong with him, Tug. He's giving me an headache. You get my boot, that's what. No, we won't have to worry about him much longer. Eh? What'd you say? Well, he hasn't, has he? He has to die sooner or later. We all do. He's still only a puppy. Hmm? Mickey, I say he's still only a puppy. Yes. You all right, love? Hmm? Uh, oh, yes, of course. Go out and see to him, Tug. Well, 
Give us that torch. Here. I'll see to him, all right. Is it his heart, you think? I don't know yet. Tell me, Inspector, how long has he been like this? I couldn't tell you. Just still been lying. If one of my blokes hadn't noticed the front door, the hut wide open. Does he live alone? Hmm? Oh, Ted. Hmm. He hadn't moved out of these woods for years. Hates people. I think he's scared of them. That's why he locks himself away in this dump. Uh, look, in the left-hand pocket of yeah. my bag, you'll find a syringe. Would you like to dig it out for me, please? Yeah, right. Yeah, he uh, must be 80 if he's a day. Sad when we end up like this, eh? Makes you dread old age, doesn't it? Is this someone? Oh, yes. Right, so. Is he unconscious? Yes. It looks as though he's got concussion. Probably fell down during the tremors last night. Mm. Except I can't find any abrasions. Uh, hold his arm out for me, will you? Yeah. You're going to give him an injection. Yeah, that's fine. Mm. Will he come out of it, you think? I don't know. There we are. Now, if we can get him into my car, I'll run him straight up to Redlow Hospital. Right. I'll take the weight of his head. If you can just lift him up a little. Mm -hmm. That's yep. it. Hey, get Doc. Look, wait a minute. He's, he's opening his eyes. Ted. Ted, can you hear me? He can't do. Look at his eyes. He's staring at me. What's he trying to say? What's it, Ted? Ted. He's closed his eyes again. Doctor, is he? No. Come on, let's get him to the car. I, I've never seen anything like that before. Those eyes. Will he make it to the hospital? I, I mean, if he's hard... His heart is stronger than yours and mine, I can assure you. What? Are you sure, Doc? Absolutely. If it's not his heart, then what is it? The surface of the earth, you see, Mr. Deverell, is like the thin crust on the top of a pie. Yeah. When the pressure beneath is too great, the crust will break open. And that's what's happened here? A build-up of pressure in the bowels of the earth? It is possible. But why has mm. this happened, Professor, all of a sudden like this? Uh, that is something that we have to find out, Mrs. Devlin. I have a feeling it's the release of an extraneous gas. The intensity of that earth movement seems to point to it. What, you, you mean volcanic? Yes, except this area has no record of a volcanic history. And in any case, there's been no smoke from the fissure. Well, whatever it is, I think we can take it that... It must be something extremely powerful that can produce tremors on the scale. Yes, which brings us back to this question of the English Channel, Professor Gomez. Now, do you believe the trouble originates there? It is only a theory, Mr. Deverell. Well, nevertheless, that is the reason you're here, Professor. <coughs> now, perhaps you'd be good enough to tell us what it was you found so alarming about your channel survey. I found two enormous cracks. Cracks? Where? On the seabed. In different positions. Both a short way from the seashore. And both ridiculously out of proportion. About 50 yards long by 3 feet wide. 50 yards? Completely clean cuts. Just as though the, the rock had been forced open with a spade. Mm. But the most extraordinary part of it was that there was no sign of any marine life. Everything had gone within a radius of two or three miles of each fissure. The sea was dull, lifeless. Nothing lived, or perhaps could live. Very strange. Did you find any more of these cracks? Oh, yes, Mr. Deverell. Many more. So these disturbances on the seabed of the channel are now moving inland. Is that what you're suggesting? What is your nearest point to the sea from here? Oh, no more than eight or nine miles to the outside. The other side of Dover. Robert. Please. How long would it take to get me a complete seismological record of this area? Well, I could phone London first thing in the morning. Please do that. I want to know every detail. As far as I know, the only thing they've ever had down here are a few shock waves. Three or four years ago. John. Yeah? As soon as it's light in the morning, we will take a look at that fracture in the surface of that road. Look, we shall need to take some samples. Is there somewhere we can use as a laboratory? Oh, yes, we have a brand new school. Their laboratory is extremely well equipped. I'll speak to the headmaster. Good. Professor Gomez, please be frank with us. Does this mean that from now on we're going to have to live for the rest of our lives fearing earthquakes? Here, in England? Oh, you, you mustn't allow the prospect to concern you too much, Mrs. Deverell. In my country, earthquakes are a part of our national heritage. My people have lived in their shadow all their lives. And they have died. Well, at least you know what to expect. You're prepared. 
When the earth begins to tremble, Mr. Deverell, you are never prepared. For those few terrifying seconds, your complete world comes to, to a standstill. You can do nothing but put yourself into the hands of God. And when that, that devil beneath your feet opens up the ground like the jaws of a serpent, you stand there poised on the edge like, like a child, helpless. And when it's all over, the child begins to wander around two days to wake up. No, Mr. Deverell, we are never prepared to meet this devil, whether it is in South America, in Japan, in Yugoslavia, or even in Holly Mill Lane. How's old Ted now? Can you see, Inspector? Uh, all right, I think. At least he's still breathing. Uh, a few more minutes, we'll be at the hospital. Yeah, good job too, I say. Gave me the shudders when he opened his eyes like that. Like... Somebody was already dead. Yeah, that's funny. What? Hollyman Lane. Look, there's someone moving around down there. Where? I can't see anybody. To the left. Can you see the torch? I guess. Uh, there's two of them. They must be out of their minds or something. That whole lane's out of bounds. We've got to stop them going near that gap. Come on, Inspector. Mickey? <whistles> Mickey! You round here? Oh, it's no use. He's gone. No, he's over there. Where? In that bush on the other side. I can't see nothing. Much too dark. He's there. I know he's there. Well, there he stays. I'm not going to try and cross over that gap. The old lot cave in. Me with it. You shouldn't be afraid, Tug. It's not like you. I tell you, he's not over there. If he was, he... Oh, Mickey, you stupid-looking... Oh, dear. Here. Hold the torch, then. Right. Now, stand back. I'm going to jump. Be careful. Keep out of the way. Now. Uh. Over. Ah, now. Come here, will you? Trying to make me break my neck or something. Tom! Hey, Tom! Cartwell, Sam! Cartwell! What the hell do you think you're doing? You'll get yourself killed doing things like that. I'm all right, quite all right. The dog broke his leash. Oh, it's not only a break, we don't get back here. Oh, do you know how deep that thing is, Mr. Yeah, Wilson? It's very deep. I'm coming back. Hey, don't be a fool, man. You can't jump that gap holding the dog. Go the long way round. Oh, no. Just keep it in the way. I'll be all right if it wasn't for dark. Inspector. Run up and put on my car headlights, will you? He's going to go straight down this lot if you don't. Right. Quick as you can. I'm all right, I tell you. I don't know what you're kicking up all these... No, past... just stay where you are. Do as I say. Mrs. Wilson. Yes? You'll be saving us all an awful lot of trouble if you just go straight back to the house. It's extremely dangerous out here. I'm not scared. Not a bit. Why should I be scared of the night? It's the best time. I feel wide awake. Hey, keep back, will you? The soil's falling all the time. Tug? What? Give me your hand. Yeah. No, don't be a fool. It's all right. He won't fall. I won't let him. Give me your hand, Tug. No. Yeah. That's yeah. right, love. Just a little further. Yeah. Come on. Just a... yeah. Don't jump. Don't. <laughs> there. Oh. You oh. see, I didn't let you fall, did I? Well, the next time he goes over there, he stays. You, you fool. Doctor. Doctor. Hmm? Come quick, please. What's the matter, Inspector? What's happened? Oh, Ted. The old boy, he's gone from the car. What? Disappeared. The car door was wide open. I can't find him but anywhere. He was unconscious. He can't have just walked off. Well, he has. And if we don't get hold of him pretty soon... Uh, what's the matter with you now, Mickey? Shut up! Eh? All of you, listen. What? Listen. Can't you hear it? What the... What is it? Give me the torch. Somebody, give me that torch. road. Look at the crack in the road. It's mud. A slide of mud coming out of the crack. Just look at it. It's all right, Doug. It's all right. Look, it's coming over the top. All the way along, it's coming over the top. The mud. <laughs> That was episode one of The Slide by Victor Pemberton, with Morris Denham as Hugh Deverell, MP, and Roger Delgado as Joseph Gomez. The part of Professor Landers was played by Rolf Lefever, Dr. Ken Richards by David Spencer, Anna Deverell by Marion Mathey, and Professor Lippert by Alan McClelland. Inspector Baxter, Geoffrey Matthews, Janet Marshall, Elizabeth Proud, Tug Wilson, Stephen Jack, Police Sergeant Wilfred Babbage, Mrs. Wilson, Miriam Margulies. Other parts were played by members of the BBC Drama Repertory Company. Special sound was by the BBC Radiophonic Workshop, and the recorded production was by John Tideman. The slide.
Slide, a science fiction serial in seven parts by Victor Pemberton, with Morris Denham and Roger Delgado. The Slide, episode two, Down Came a Blackbird. Redlow Newtown has suffered a series of earth tremors. In nearby Holly Mill Lane, Dr. Richards and Inspector Baxter find mud seeping out of the vast fissure in the middle of the road. They immediately telephone the news to M.P. Hugh Deverell. Uh, uh, oh. uh, Redlow 306, hello. Yes, Deverell speaking. Mm. Hmm? Oh, Inspector, do you know what time it is? It's six o'clock in the morning. Well, of course I'm in bed. Where do you think I am? What? What has? What is it, darling? Where are you sure? Well, is there any danger of it? Oh, there is. What is it, Hugh? Shh. Well, uh, I suppose we'd better get somebody down there. Darling, tell me. Anna, will you please wait? Yes. Look, Inspector, have you notified Professor Gomez and the others? Well, then please do so right away. I'll try and get down as quickly as possible. Right. Yes, yes. Oh, damn. What's the matter, Hugh? Oh, we've got some trouble at Holly Mill Lane. Mud overflowing from the crack in the road. Mud? Mm, or something. I, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, oh, six o'clock in the morning. Where's it coming from? Hasn't been raining, has no, it? No, I don't think so. Have you seen my pullover, the green one? Uh, middle drawer. Uh, ah, yes. Uh, how serious is it, then? Well, it's been gushing out all night, apparently. But all the way along? Oh, Baxter exaggerates. Well, that fish is about a hundred yards long. It'll take them days to get the mess cleared up. Well, the slide's going to reach the Wilson farmhouse. It backs onto the lane. Slide. Yeah, down the hill. Hill? The mud has been sliding down the hill from the fissure. There isn't a hill. Huh? Oh, don't be stupid, please. I tell you, there isn't a hill. Holly Mill Lane's as flat as a pancake. I've been along there dozens of times. Well, in the then car. you couldn't have noticed. You'll see. Oh, Hugh. Hmm? Don't go. Look, I have to go. Very well, then go. Oh, darling, I have to go. You know that. You don't think I like going out in the middle of the night, dear? Leaving you here like this? I don't know. Well, I'll show you then. Mm. <sighs> Convinced? Don't be long, Hugh. I hate being on my own. Oh, just half an hour, dear. Hugh? Yes? Yeah? I don't care what you say. Holly Mill Lane isn't on a hill. It's as flat as a pancake. Yes, of course it is, my dear. Of course it is. Oh, it's no good. It's, it's just like chipping away at stone. It's a, it's a hell of a job even to get a few pieces. I simply can't believe this was mud. Inspector, last night you told us that this was a slide. Well, last night it was, sir. Right up till dawn, just before you came. I went into Mr. Wilson's to phone you. When I came back, this is how it was. But it mm. couldn't possibly have dried up in so short a time. And look at it now. It's a solid mess. All I'm telling you, sir, is that when we came up here last night, we got the shock of our lives. The mud pouring out of that crack like nothing I've ever seen before. Right up there, by that first group of trees. Look, Inspector, can you remember what it looked like? Hmm? Well, was it the sort of mud you'd expect to find after a, a downfall of rain? No, sir. No, sir, it wasn't. It was filthy stuff. The sort of stuff you get out of a volcano. Like, uh, like lava? Yes, sir. It was bubbling, moving. But what I hated most of all was that noise. Noise? Yeah, sort of slithering, squeaking. What do you make of it, John? No, I'm dashed if I know, really, the... The thing that gets me is this color, this overall green. It could be an iron content. Yes, it could, but I've never come across it so distinctly in this part of the country before, and certainly not down here. And look, look, you see these long, thin streaks? They're, yes. they're a different color to the rest of the formation. You see, at first glance, it looks like a, a dried-up mud bank or something, but... Wherever does it come from? Under normal conditions, this sort of thing would, would take years to form. Yes, the soil has obviously been swamped by a vast amount of water. Maybe an underground stream. Well, if it has, it's happened beneath the surface of the earth. It's as dry as a bone up here. But how can mud harden into stone almost instantaneously? Robert, hmm? 
You remember the year I did my channel survey? Yes, yes, indeed. Can you remember any seismograph readings for the British Isles about that time? Well, I know there was something on the French side, yeah. but nothing very much. If you want, I could get London to send me down some photostats. Could you do that, please? Of course. Well, uh, good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Mr. Devon. Good morning. Oh, well. Hmm. How the devil are we going to get rid of all this stuff? Well, I've been in touch with R.E.F. Redlow, sir. The station commandant says he's quite willing to let us have a few men if we get hold of some equipment. Well, what do you need? Uh, electric drills. Got to try and break up the stuff. Anyway, I'm all in favour of getting it sealed off before people start drifting around. Very well, do what you can. Yes, sir. Well, Professor Gomez, what do you make of all this? At the present moment, nothing. Huh? But have you ever seen anything like this? Well, where does the mud come from? Mr. Deverell, this is the epicenter of the tremors felt in this area. One cannot expect a fracture of the Earth's crust to go unnoticed. Geological disturbance of some description was inevitable. Look, I'm quite aware of that, Professor. I merely asked if you knew what was causing it. We have a feeling there's an underground river or stream. At this stage, it's very difficult to tell. With your permission, we should like to start a series of investigations. Well, go right ahead. The sooner the better. But uh, we would prefer these investigations to be carried out with the maximum secrecy. Uh, yes, and we don't want to start a panic. No, no. But isn't the real danger over now? The mud has dried up. Once we've sealed the fissure, we shall just... Mr. Deverell, we have no guarantee that such a thing will not happen again. What do you mean, the mud might start again? Unfortunately, nature's ways are unpredictable until proved otherwise. She's like a naughty child. We don't know how to treat her until we know what is wrong. Ah. As it is flat, isn't it? I beg your pardon? Well, this lane, Anna was right. It's not on a hill, nor even an incline. Uh, no, no, I suppose it's not. I hadn't really thought about it. Why? Well, I can understand the mud sliding along the flat surface here, but how is it capable of sliding up the bank of the lane? That's all, gentlemen. Good shot, Tug. Good shot. Go on, Mickey. Go on, boy. Fetch him. Fetch him. <laughs> Number of years I've been shooting rabbits on this land, and still I can't seem to get rid of them. Not even with myxomatosis. Oh, it's so... so quiet, isn't it? Eh? What is, Doctor? Well, everything. The whole atmosphere. It's unnatural. You know, it's the most terrifying thing I've ever seen in my life. What is? Why, Holly Mill Lane. Why, the earth can just be ripped apart in a matter of seconds. Mm. It cuts through that road like like a tin opener. And that mud pouring out of it like nothing a man's ever seen before. Ah, here comes Mickey. Here, boy. Here. Come on, Mickey. Now, what's he got in his mouth? That's not a rabbit. Give it here, boy. That drop. Uh, oh, no, you dopey. Well, it's, it's a bird. A blackbird. Quite a big one. Has he killed it? No, I don't think so. There aren't any marks on it. And it couldn't have been your bullet. That's funny. I didn't think it was the dog. You don't usually go after wild fowl. He's much too docile. Oh, wait a minute, Tug. Do you remember a little while ago, soon after we left your place, didn't I tell you I thought I saw something drop from the sky? Yeah, that's right. I didn't hear a bullet shot, did you? No. Anyway, who wants to kill a blackbird? Yes. Who? I'm so glad you called, Inspector. And uh, there we are. It's none of my business, you understand, but I wouldn't be doing my duty if I didn't keep you fully informed. I quite understand, Mrs. Luke, and I do appreciate it. Uh, will you take one or two lumps? Uh, no sugar, thank you very much. It was that terrible old man, you see, the one you're looking for. There you are, and I'm not surprised. Oh, Ted, the farmer. Yes, that's the fellow. What an unkempt person he is. I told him so, you know, many a time. You've seen him then, madam? Uh, of course. Well, when was this? First thing this morning. Oh. I was on my bicycle on the London Road. Tuesday is always my day to go into Redlow Market. Uh, yes, but It's I... about the only time I can leave my dear mother on her own, especially after all those awful earth shakes. Yes, of course. So, uh, he was walking along the London Road, was no. he? No, 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 no. I was on the London Road. He was in Holly Mill Lane. Holly Mill Lane? Are you sure? Absolutely sure. As I looked down, there he was, straggling along like the nasty old drunk he is. He always was a one for the bottle, you know. Mm. Anyway, I was terrified he was going to walk right into that dreadful crater thing. It was straight ahead of him. He'd have fallen in. Well, what did you do? 
I called out. And did he hear you? Not at all. He didn't even look round to see who it was. So I got off my bicycle, ran up to him, and tapped him on the shoulder. And he stopped? Yes, yes, he stopped. It wasn't until that moment I realised something was wrong. Wrong? For a moment we just stood there until gradually he turned round to face me. His face... Yes? It was yellow, so tired and drawn, he looked so old. But most of all was his eyes. They, they looked strange somehow. Did he say anything? Yes, he gave me a vicious look and said, Go away, go away and mind your own business. For one terrible moment, I, I thought he was going to hit me. But he didn't. No, no, he just turned his back on me and walked off. Thank goodness, at least he went in a different direction, away from the lane. Now, which direction, Mrs. Luke? Can you remember? Across the fields at the back of Mr. Wilson's farm. Thank you. Inspector, what is wrong with that old man? He couldn't have been drunk all this time, could he? Is he ill or something? Oh, I don't know, Mrs. Luke, but thank you very much for your information. You'll be most helpful. As soon as we know any more, we'll keep you advised. Oh, no, 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 Inspector, don't go. There's something more. Yes? What it, is it? It was horrible. I, I noticed it as he was walking away. A poor little thing, so cruel, so, so very cruel. Fancy wanting to go and kill a pigeon. A poor little... Wood pigeon. Dead as a doorknob. Hmm. It's still warm. Someone's been amusing himself. I'd like to know who. What, you mean you think someone's been put in Dane poison? I don't know, but I'm going to find out. Tug, got a handkerchief on you? Uh, yes, I think so. Here you are. Uh, thanks. What are you going to do? I'm going to take a couple back. I want to know what's been going on. Uh. Hey, Tug. Uh. Keep still. Stay where you are. Hey, wh wh what's it? Get over here. Someone's coming. Quick. Uh. It'll be interesting to see what... Well... Hey, get down. Here they come. Dog, do you see who it is? Look, can you see? Keep down. Hey, but can you see who it is? That's Mary. That's my wife, Mary. You know, I'm very surprised. I had no idea the British were capable of such a radical plan. Oh, yes, they're pretty with it down here, all right. I'd give my right arm to send my kids to a school like this. In fact, I could do with a laboratory like this for myself. Oh, think yourself lucky, my friend. You should come to Santiago sometime. You've never really forgiven us, have you, Joseph? Forgiven you for what? Well, we gave you a pretty lousy deal. Oh, don't oh, think I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not trying to say that I was the blue-eyed boy who believed everything you said about that channel survey, but... Now, my dear John, I am a South American. We Latins were noted for our excitable nature. Oh. Eh? <laughs> no, no, I don't blame anyone for not believing me. What I knew, particularly at that time, it must have taken some believing, I know that. What do you believe, Joseph? I believe we are reaching a significant era in the history of the Earth's surface. What it is, as yet, I don't know. But maybe if we have a look at that mud sample of yours, we'll find out, eh? Joseph! Uh, Joseph! Oh, my dear fellow, we've got to work fast. Yes, yeah, somebody had better do something before the whole country shakes to pieces. Well, why? What is wrong? Well, the same thing's happened. I've just been on the phone to London. They've now had some earth tremors in the north. What? Where? The Lake District and in Scotland. The water on Lake Belvedere was set in motion for nearly a minute. Apparently there's been absolute chaos. Any fractures in the soil? Oh, we're just waiting to hear. The shocks were felt as far away as the Shetland Isles. Oh, Joseph, what do you think this means? I'm not sure. What? Well, not sure? Well, what do you mean, you're not sure? All I can tell you is that this appears to be part of a pattern. A pattern? Yes. First of all, the seabed in the English Channel. Then, the immediate south, here. And now, tremors in the north. Well, does that mean that we can expect more of these disturbances? Mr. Deverell, the first man who is able to foretell the exact place where the earth will shake will be a very rich man indeed. Hmm. Hey, Joseph, come and have a look at this. Why, what is it? The sample well, it's burnt a hole in my briefcase. Burnt? Be careful, don't touch it. When I tried, it was like getting a hold of dry ice. Here, let's tip it out onto the table. Now, careful, careful now. Now, let's have a look. It's a bright green. Extraordinary. Well, it could be the fluorescent lighting in here. In a way, it's really rather beautiful to look at. Like a precious stone. Oh, God, I can't God. understand it. Those streaks running through. Now, I remember where I've seen this before. We have a rocky beach just south of Valparaiso in Chile. I saw this type of thing soon after the earthquake in 1960. But, Joseph, this isn't rock. It's a definite mud formation. Yes. These streaks are usually part of a mechanical corrosion or, or something rather like a static type. In, in fact, look, 
I, I've seen this before myself in various parts of the Pennines. Well, couldn't this be the same thing? Mr. Deverell, stalactites are a formation which take, in some cases, thousands of years to corrode. Gentlemen, I'm going to London. Now, where can we reach you, sir? I shall either be at my club or at the house. And gentlemen, whatever you do, just do it quickly. I want Redlow to survive. I'm afraid we had to move Miss Marshall from the main ward, Doctor. She was beginning to disturb the other patients. But is she still delirious? Well, apparently, but it's so terribly difficult to tell. Mm. She's just lying there, mumbling to herself the whole time. Well, the extraordinary thing is, about an hour ago, one of the patients in the next bed told her she, she sat up, looked around the ward, and then just slumped back again. Odd. I suppose it is a form of concussion. What did Dr. Robson say? He sent for Mr. Furman. He's coming down from London in the morning. Uh, have you been able to make out anything she's been saying? No, not a thing. Just this awful sort of rambling. Oh, what a terrible shock for you, Doctor. You're due to be married shortly, aren't you? Uh, yes. I I'm just amazed there weren't any more injuries. Most of the people they brought in were fairly old. Poor things. They're absolutely bewildered. Ah, uh, this is the room, Doctor. Thank goodness she seems to be fairly quiet. Janet. Janet, darling, can you hear me? It's me, Ken. I, uh, I don't think she can hear you. What's her temperature? Quite normal. Blood's just a fraction low, but I don't think it's anything to... <coughs> Doctor, look, look, she's opening her eyes. Janet, can you hear me, darling? She, she's wide awake. She must be. Life, 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 it's life. She's closed her eyes again. She must be having a nightmare. Life? I wonder what she meant. Sister, hmm? I shall be at Mr. Wilson's farmhouse tonight. If there's any change in her condition at all, I want you to telephone me immediately. Yes, I don't care when it is, but I want to know. Tug! Tug! What are you digging this time of night? He's dead, that's why. Hmm? The dozy thing's dead. No good to us now, Mickey. But well, your... Your dog, Mickey? Well, what happened? I don't know and I don't care. All I know is he's dead and the sooner I get rid of him, the better. And now look, Tug, this can't go on. What with those birds and the rabbit and the... Did you speak to your wife? Yeah. I spoke to her. What was she doing out there in those woods? She was looking. Looking? Looking for what? Just looking. Now, don't be damn stupid, man. She was up to something. You know she was. And you listen to me, Dr. Richards. Don't start going around flinging accusations at folks. Oh, Tug, listen to me. If somebody's been using poison to kill off animals, I want to know about it. I want to know why and for what reason. She didn't put down no poison. Not my Mary. How do you know that? Because if she did, she must have been kept pretty busy. You just take a walk over that field, Doctor. It's like a graveyard. Dead birds, dead squirrels, dead rabbits, dead field mice. What? Yeah, and this is where I found the dog. Just lying there in a heap. Oh, well. Maybe he's better off. This is a pretty rotten world we have to live in. Excuse me! Hmm? Hmm? Excuse me! Uh, yes! Uh, I'm sorry to trouble you. I'm looking for Dr. Richards. I'm Dr. Richards. Oh, Doctor. I'm sorry to trouble you, sir. They told me I could find you here. Hmm? A, a few of us have been exploring the caves. We're camped just up the road at Holly Crag. We could do with your help, Doctor. There's been an accident. Accident? Or at least we think there has. A couple of our blokes went down this morning. It was only supposed to have been a routine job, but I'm afraid they've met with some sort of trouble. Huh? One of them took a tumble, but we're not quite certain how bad. The other bloke said he's in too much pain to move him, so we thought we'd better get hold of you. Uh, how do you know about this? Well, we were in radio contact up until a while ago, but the transistor's flaked out on us. Oh, we don't know what's going on down there. Right, I'll, I'll get my things. Oh, oh, that's very good of you, Doctor. Then I'll come with you. Nobody knows them caves better than what I do. Yes? Uh, can I come in? Mrs. Deverell. I saw the light as I was passing. I thought it was you. 
Well, aren't you having any sleep tonight? Oh, I, I have to work. We are waiting for some equipment to arrive from London. It looks very odd in there. That small piece of stone in a huge glass tank. Mm. It's the school aquarium. We had to borrow it. What does it all mean, mud turning to stone like that? Uh, who knows, Mrs. Devil? All we can do is to try and find out. He's pushing you very hard, isn't he? My husband. Your husband is a strong-willed man, Mrs. Devereux. Do you hate him? Oh, hate is for non-thinkers. I don't hate anybody. But at the same time, it doesn't mean that I have to respect them. You mustn't blame him, you know. He had to fight his own principles to bring you here. It wasn't exactly an easy decision for me to come here. Yes, I know. He was wrong about you, Joseph. But then he's often wrong about people. I suppose that's why he doesn't love me. I, uh... Oh, don't be embarrassed. Everybody knows. He's a lot older than me. We knew it wasn't going to be easy. Unfortunately, I'm just beginning to realize. Mrs. Devereux, <laughs> I think... Marriage is such an overestimated institution, don't you think? It cuts you down to size. Like those new town citizens out there. Look, Mrs. Devereux... You know, you're very young to be a professor. I always thought professors had... White hair and long beards. At least most of the ones I've met have. But I think I you... think maybe you should go home, Mrs. Devil. It's getting late. Oh. Oh, Joseph, get your coat on quickly. Oh, Robert, what's the matter? The lane, my dear fellow, is absolutely fantastic. The lane? Holly Mill Lane. The fissure. It's swamped with mud. The whole place is slithering with the stuff. What? Mud. <laughs> But it's dried up. I thought the whole thing was as hard as iron. At the present moment, Mrs. Devereux, they've got half the men from the RAF station fighting to push it back. It's bursting out of the fissure all along the way, and, and the noise. Oh, Joseph, I don't think they're going to be able to hold it. I just don't think they can do it. No. Give me your hand, Doctor. Right. Keep your back well into the wall. Okay. We're just coming up to the rich now. <laughs> Are you all right? Oh, yes. Okay. Hey, this is quite something, isn't it? Hey, it's some of the best stalactite formations on the entire crag. It's possible they were started in the Neolithic period. Neolithic? Do you mean you think there was a dwelling or something down here? If you'd like to have a look over here, Doctor. Uh, Mr. Wilson, could you turn your lap this way, please? Oh, uh, thanks. You see here, these carvings. Good Lord, yes. Uh, the three figures. This shape here is a man, and, and a, a woman here, and, and just behind, the child. It, it looks as though they're turning their backs on something. Aye, whatever it is, they're scared out of their wits. They've got a photo repro of it in uh, the Dover Museum. Oh, by the way, um, have you looked down below? Oh, yes. Now, they're stalagmites, aren't they? Aye, that's right, but they're only babies here. But give them a few more thousand years. They're beautiful. But what a fantastic colour, that brilliant green. It, it's amazing how it stands out down here. Almost luminous. Hey, uh, I can hear running water. Aye, that's the waterfall. Our blokes are quite near there. And we should be able to call out soon. It's quite a narrow ledge along here, so keep close, Doctor. Oh, you needn't worry about that. I'm right behind you. Uh, can't you block it over at the, at the other end? It's impossible, sir. Uh, as fast as we shovel the mud, another lot slides right back again. You've got to be so careful, sir. If you get any on your hands, it burns like mad. It, it keeps sticking to the shovel. Well, how far has it reached up there? Can you tell us? Oh, I should say about five or six feet, sir. The squad leader sent back for some more help. He's going to try and get over a cup of bull Oh, excellent. Oh, thank you very much, Corporal. Just do your best. Very good, sir. Hey, come on, you bloods, get a move on there. Robert, we're Robert, going to need some barriers here. Do you think you can get someone to do something about it? Uh, Johnny will have to do something about it. If this mud spreads any further, it will reach the farmhouse. Joseph, I've never seen anything like this before in my whole life. For heaven's sake, what is it? We have to face the fact that there is something forcing the mud out from the root of the fissure. As soon as we've been able to find what? Yes, yes, but this terrible noise. Yes, I know, I know. But we can't do anything until we've analyzed the mud samples. Joseph. There must be an acid content of some sort. The soil and the grass are being scorched right the way through. John, how deep is the mud? Can you tell? No more than the nine or ten inches at its deepest point. Look, do you think we could separate? How do you mean? Well, divide it into sections. Then we could clear each one at a time. Well, that's the point. Those bulldozers should be here soon. As you clear each section, cover the fish with boards and then put on it some heavy weights. No, that's no good. The boards would burn through. We've already tried. Well, then you have to use metal. Metal? Metal or stone or anything you can lay your hands on. The main thing is to seal up that fissure as quickly as we can. 
Joseph, what happens if it rains? Will this make things worse? It's very thundery. It rains? It feels as though it might. Rain? Yes, maybe it will rain. <laughs> Somebody's got that bag, please. Yeah, here we are. Oh. Tug, help me tear the trouser leg. Quick. Yeah, all right. Now, be careful. <coughs> Good. Now, does this hurt? Here. <coughs> Sorry. Here's Keith, then. He's gone. Gone? What do you mean, gone? Gone. Gone, gone. What's the matter with you? Tell you the meaning of the word. He's gone. Dead. Dead? Barry, what the hell are you saying? He went over the edge there. There was nothing I could do about it. If you'd got here earlier, it wouldn't have happened. How did it happen? But Keith looked round for a place for me to rest up a bit. Oh, be careful, Doc. Oh, sorry. We got as far as the waterfall, so we pitched down. We hadn't been here more than ten minutes when we heard someone coming down the ridge there. I thought it was you. Who was he? A bloke. An old bloke. How old? At least 80, if not more. Okay, I couldn't possibly be. He'd never have got down here on his own, not a man of his age. Uh, did he say anything? That's just it. He tried to speak to him, but he wouldn't say a word. Just kept right on walking. Walking until he reached the edge. Edge? And then he stopped. I remember his eyes. A bright blue. That kid, all right. They, they just fixed you with a stare. He gave me the creeps. And then? <laughs> then he started to sway about. Well, Keith rushed over and, and tried to grab him. But then suddenly, for no reason at all, the old boy started lashing out at him, like a maniac he was. Well, it turned into a fight. Keith did his best to... Well, I shouted, but I was stuck here. I couldn't move an inch. But they both fell together. But the old boy, he had every intention of jumping. He wanted to, that I'll swear. Barry, now what edge was this? Do you mean by the water? <laughs> water? <laughs> Take your lamp and go and look for yourself. No, not that way. Over there. No, don't go too far. Now... Stand with your back to the wall. Now, look down. Well, I can't see anything. It all looks complete. Oh, my. Doctor, you better come over here. Come and take a look at this. That was episode two of The Slide by Victor Pemberton, with Maurice Denham as Hugh Deverell, MP, and Roger Delgado as Joseph Gomez. The part of Professor Landers was played by Rolf Lefevre, Dr. Ken Richards by David Spencer, Anna Deverell by Marion Mathy, and Professor Lippert by Alan McClelland. Inspector Baxter, Geoffrey Matthews, Tug Wilson, Stephen Jack, Mrs. Luke, Noel Hood, nursing sister, Eva Haddon, Janet Marshall, Elizabeth Proud, Sorensen, Fraser Carr, RAF Corporal Anthony Hall, Barry Glyn Dearman. Other parts were played by members of the BBC Drama Repertory Company. The special sound was by the BBC Radiophonic Workshop, and the recorded production was by John Tideman. The Slide, a science fiction serial in seven parts by Victor Pemberton, with Morris Denham and Roger Delgado. The Slide, Episode 3, Analysis.
Following the earth tremors, anxiety is growing at the alarming numbers of wildlife dying in the countryside surrounding Redlow Newtown. In the early hours of the morning, Dr. Richards and his party reached the surface of the Holly Crag Caves after the discovery of yet another earth fissure. Two men, Mr. Sorensen, two perfectly good men, have lost their lives because of a harebrained scheme of no significance. I hope you're proud of yourself. Now look here, Inspector. We've been down those caves time and time again. We didn't know we were going to find that stuff. Have a heart. You knew damn well we've had these earth tremors. You've got to postpone the descent. Most of us are using up our holidays for this, Inspector. We don't have time to postpone. Besides, potholing isn't just a sport, you know. It's an important scientific survey. Well, how is Barry, Doc? Is he going to be all right? It's a break just below the kneecap. They'll fix him up in hospital. If anything, he's had a bad shock. Oh, we're very grateful for you, Doctor. I don't know how we'd have got him out without you. I don't think I enjoyed crawling about in the dark, Mr. Sorensen. It's not exactly my favourite form of activity. And if you'll take my tip, you and your group will clear right out of here once and for all. You didn't actually see old Ted down there at all? No. Well, how can you be sure of it? Well, the description was too perfect to... Oh, what does it matter, anyway? Two men are dead. You can't bring them back. Oh, Barry's a good bloke. He wouldn't he lie about seeing the old man. I've never known him to get worked up about anything. He's a good bloke. So is Keith. Oh, I'm not looking forward to seeing his wife. How does a man of Ted's age manage to crawl on all fours and in the darkness? And why? Suicide. Suicide? He jumped. They tried to stop him, but... Oh, come off it, Doc. People who want to do away themselves don't go to all that trouble. Well, apparently he's struck out like a maniac. The old boy's responsible for what happened down there. He was obviously some kind of nut. Well, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Well, then let me tell you, Inspector. Seal up those caves as soon as you can. Come off it, Doctor. In a few hours, those tunnels are going to be slithering with mud from end to end, from top to bottom. Right, put on a bit. You've seen what's happened in Holly Mill Lane, Inspector. You mean it's the same thing? I'd lay my reputation on it. It's the same, all right. Inspector, those caves have been down there for centuries. You just can't destroy them like that. Forever. You'd be destroying scientific knowledge. Scientific knowledge can take care of itself, Mr. Sorensen. I'm more interested in the protection of the community. Seal it, Inspector. Seal it before it's too late. <laughs> I'm sorry to have to bring you back from London so soon, Mr. Deverell. I can assure you I wouldn't have done so unless it was absolutely imperative. No, it's quite all right, Professor. It's good of you to meet me here. Oh, I got your message at the club last night. I knew it must be urgent. Well, what's happened? There's been a fresh overflow of mud in Holly Mill Lane. What? Huh? Another one? In all my experience, Mr. Deverell, I can't remember anything like it. Hmm. We've been up half the night trying to get the wretched stuff back in the fissure. As fast as we've cleared one lot, there's another to replace it. Hey, I thought they'd sealed it all up with boards or something. Oh, impossible. The whole lot's burst under the pressure. The Wilson farmhouse is going to be in real trouble unless we can do something rather quickly. Well, provided we can prevent any more damage before it dries up. Mr. Yeah. Deverell, when I left Holly Mill Lane just under an hour ago, the overflows had stopped. But the mud was dry as before, like solid concrete slabs. Yeah. You have all the help you need? Only thanks to those boys from the RAF station. They've worked miracles. Well, do the best you can. Just before I came to meet you here, I received word that two new fissures have been discovered. What? In the walls of the Holly Crag Caves, just outside Redlow. The caves? Also, the Americans reported this morning a series of earth tremors on the shores of Lake Michigan, Chicago. Oh. I respect your integrity, Mr. Deverell. But your own personal feelings have no place in this emergency. Now, look here, Landers. I don't care what sort of mud it is. What I want to know is where is it coming from and how do we stop it? And I think you should be interested in our work at the laboratory, Mr. Deverell. During the night, the specimen of mud taken by Professor Lippitt has grown to more than three times its original size. All right, Mrs. Deverell. Leave the tap running, will you, please? Yes, sir. Still not sure we shouldn't have tried HC1 or even H2SO4. Might have been a shortcut. Before we resort to the acids, John, let's see what water can do. I can't get over it, you know, to think that just a, a few hours ago that same sample was big enough to fit inside my briefcase. And now look at the size of it. What I'm more concerned with is how it manages to change its substance from one period to the next. You know, when I came in here last night... It was wet and clammy, but it was nowhere near filling the base of the tank. And it's obvious it only swells in its liquid state. I've never found a geological formation do that before. Is that enough water? Uh, that's fine. Turn it off, will you please? Right. Got you off. Well, is anything happening? Uh, we have to give it time to penetrate. It needs a full immersion. I think it looks positively repulsive. 
Like a great octopus just waiting to stretch out. <laughs> I wish it were an octopus. At least we'd know how to treat it. <laughs> Mrs. Deverell, I really think you should go home now. We are very grateful for your help. Oh, I'm not tired. Oh, but your husband should be back by now. It's quite all right, Professor. I'm sure he knows how to make his own cup of tea. Joseph. Hmm? I think something's happening. Let me see. Look, there are some small particles floating off. Can you see? Like very fine pieces of shell. You may find there are shavings of small pebbles picked up during the overflow. At least it is a good sign that the water has managed to separate them. We must give it a little longer. Uh, come in. Oh, sorry to trouble you. Dr. Richard. Oh, come in, Doctor. Thank you. I didn't want to disturb you, gentlemen. Mrs. Deverell. I know you're up to your eyes in it. Is anything wrong, Doctor? Uh, I need some advice. Something's going on in the town, and, well, frankly, I can't make head nor tail of it. I, I thought you might be able to help. Well, go on, please. Well, it's something I noticed yesterday morning, soon after the tremors, all that business in Holly Mill Lane. Mr. Wilson and I... Mr. Wilson? Uh, he owns the farmhouse. Oh, yes. We were taking a shortcut across one of his fields just at the back of the lane. He did a bit of shooting, and we thought we'd bagged a rabbit. Yes? But we hadn't. It was a bird. A blackbird. You mean you'd shot it by mistake? No. We found it lying in the grass at the foot of a hefty-looking oak tree. No bullet hole. Then, we found a lot more. More? You mean birds? Everything. Birds, mice, squirrels, rabbits, wood Could pigeons, the lot. It was like a graveyard for dead animals. Anyway, I took a couple of them back to my surgery for dissection. They weren't marked or even bruised, and there were no traces of poison. Then what? Well, I'd say both of them had died from some form of asphyxia. And there were also very distinct blood clots flooding the brain cells, the hemorrhage, in fact. Doctor, you are connecting these deaths with the mud overflows, eh? Is that correct? I came, Professor, because wildlife is dying off all over the town, and it's my job to try and find out why. No, no, you're quite right, Doctor. I think there is a connection. Joseph, oh, what I... way? It's not the first time I've encountered this situation. There's a small village to the north of Concepcion in my country. Wildlife died there quite considerably after the 1960 earthquake. Did anyone ever discover why? No. But it's possible the fracture in the Earth's crust released some compressed gas, maybe even nitrogen. Yes, but in Holly Mill Lane, it would have affected everybody, especially those working along the fissure. You found no traces of poison in your dissection? None whatever. What about insecticides? This is a country district. They use it all the time. Now I'm convinced that whatever the destructive force is, we shall find what we are looking for in the mud overflows. Joseph! Yes? Yeah? Look at the tank! The water! It's turned green. All the water in the tank. It's turned green! Get back into bed immediately. No, don't touch me. Look, it's a mess in here. Water jugs all over the floor. Have you been doing? Why can't you leave me alone? I didn't want to come here in the first place. Leave me alone! And why are these lines drawn? I thought I gave orders. I drew them. Then you shouldn't. It's a lovely day outside and there's no reason. Too bright. The sun was hurting my eyes. All you had to do is ring for nurse, Miss Marshall. You've only made things twice as difficult. Nurse! It's about time you had some sleep, young lady. You can't expect your condition to improve whilst you're lying here in the dark, day and night, with your eyes wide open. Oh, you're not going to touch me with that needle again, are you? Oh, please, sister, please, please, now don't, then. please, please. Oh, nurse, no. will you get me a syringe, please? You know how many teeth? Uh, yes. <laughs> now, look here, my dear. You're not going to help yourself by doing that, are you? You're getting yourself all worked up over nothing. Now, now, why don't you lie back and relax, hmm? A little sleep won't do you any harm. I don't want to sleep. Well, that's silly. I only wish I had the chance. It isn't life when you're not conscious. Your body must have a chance to unwind, my dear. You, you can't expect it to do that whilst you're wide awake. There. You, you won't open the blinds, will you? Of course not. Not if you don't want me to. Yes, it's a Oh, thank you, Miss. No, no, please don't. I hate having that needle near me. Miss Marshall, now we're not going to be foolish about this, are we? Keep still, please. <laughs> Nurse, hold her arm. <laughs> right. Now, you can forget about everything, my dear. Just close your eyes. I don't think it'll do any good, sister. The last one I gave her, she just lay here in the dark the whole time without saying a word, eyes wide open. She didn't even like it when I switched on the light. Oh, it's life. 
life born all over again. Nurse, I think Dr. Robeson's in our patients. Run down and ask him to come up for a few moments, please. I'd, I'd feel happier if he had a look at her before we settle down for the night. Uh, yes, Dr. Hurry, please. Miss Marshall? Miss Marshall, can you hear me? You can't sleep with your eyes open, my dear. Come now, try and get some sleep. Sleep, 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 Everything's scorched. As fast as they uh, dig it up, it's as though the whole grass and soil has been burnt. It's quite extraordinary. I must say, I find it all rather invigorating. Invigorating? Yeah. Like standing on the edge of a cliff, looking out to sea, wanting to know what's on the other side, to catch a, a glimpse of the unknown. <laughs> haven't you ever felt like that? No, Mr. Deverell, I'm glad to say I haven't. I get very impatient with things I don't know about, especially problems I can't solve. Uh, you mean you have a fear of the unknown? Mm, not fear. Apprehension. Uh, I'm always much more interested at the end when I discover why a problem is insoluble. Tell me something, Professor. Mm -hmm. What do you think the people of this town would do if they suddenly woke up one morning and found their precious homes crumbling around them? An extraordinary thing to say. I thought Redlow was your pride and joy. No, it's not the town. Towns are much the same wherever you go. It's... It's people. They disturb me. They always have. Even when I was a young man at university, they were the one thing I dreaded most. I suppose that's why I didn't marry for so long. This is not an easy world for us to survive in, Mr. Deverell. No, it's not the world's fault, Professor. It's people. They're so helpless, like children, unable to think to do things for themselves. That's why I'm not so sure Redlow is such a good idea, after all. That's strange. Have you noticed something? What? The trees. Yes. And the bushes over there. They're drooping. Right the way round. Can you see? Yes. It looks as though... Do you think they are dying? Yes. Yes. Yes, I think they are. Got the whole fence on that quarter side down. I don't care what they do from now on, but I'm going to demand barricades all the way. Oh, love. What are you, you sitting in the dark for? It's beautiful and sunny, eh? I'm all right. I like it. Is anything wrong, love? I said I was all right, didn't I? Yes. But... Then stop fussing. Oh, it's because of last night, isn't it? I know I shouldn't have gone out and left you on your own. You must have been scared out of your life, poor love. Scared? Why should I be scared? I like to listen to the quiet. It makes sense. Quiet? What, with all that noise going on last night? I didn't hear no noise. Well, the, the mud, that noise. It's been pouring out the lane. Oh, that first time. You, you remember, love, we were scared stiff. Not anymore. Oh, what do you mean, not anymore? If we get any more of that stuff, it'd float clean through those barricades right here to the house. I couldn't stand any more of that squeaking and squealing. It'd drive me round the bend. So what was your... When I... I was on my own here last night, I felt lonely and fed up. I didn't want you to go. I, I was depressed. Oh, Mary. I, I started wandering about the room aimlessly, looking at things, objects, anything. For some unknown reason, they all started coming into focus, standing out. It was a long time before I found the reason why. Well, why? It was because they weren't nearly as important as I'd always thought they were. Not one single object in this room was important. Not one. And then I, I could hear the mud outside. I ran and opened the window. It was dark. I, I couldn't see a thing. But I knew it was there. I could almost feel its presence. Do you understand, Tug? It, it wasn't forcing itself. It was a gentle slide, friendly, and it made me feel better. Much better. Uh, 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 that should do it. 
We're going to need a new tank, Joseph. By the look of things, you'll need some new hands. They're stained with dye. I think we must be prepared to explore the possibility of MGOH2. Magnesium? <laughs> yes, I see what you mean. It's got that metallic sheen about it. Hey, wait a minute. What's this? What? Can you see on the flat side? A sort of white powder. Oh, yes. Let's get it out of the tank and have a better look. Yeah. Eh? Careful. There. Now, keep yourself clear, please, Mrs. Deverell. This stuff's got a nasty habit of burning. Yes. Uh, Joseph, there's a file on the... Hmm? Yes, that's Here it. it. Can I have it, please? Thanks. It's... Uh, it's like chalk. What do you think, John? Salt. Salt? Rock salt. Are you sure? I've seen enough of it in the Caspian. But it's not possible to get formations this far inland. From the channel. Why, yes. And that rather leaves us where we came in, doesn't it? Not a word, not another word. Just let anyone try and tell me where this lot came from. What? Frankly, sea shells. We've been digging them up all morning. Not in Holly Mill Lane. In Holly Mill Lane. Some were stuck fast in the mud, the rest were found all along the edge of the fissure. And there are plenty more where they came from. These are the sort of things my kids pick up on the beach. They've got thousands in their bedroom. And give them a few more with my compliments. Sedimentation. That means they are following a course inland from the sea. Oh, what a clever fellow. Amazing what they teach them at university these days. Robert, <laughs> do you know where we can get hold of an electro-generator? A generator? Yes. If we can force enough heat into a thermatically sealed container, this may be a way of breaking up the mud. At least we can study the effects. Do you think you could get one? I don't know, I suppose so. But listen, Joseph, I still think that the strong sulfuric chloride element in the mud... Before we do anything else, why not try an opposing agent? No, I think not. Anything's worth a try. We haven't the time. Time? You mean, you think there's going to be another... All I think at the moment, Robert, is that whatever the destructive force in the mud is, it's not only acid. Then for heaven's sake, man, what is it? Hello? Oh, aren't you going to say hello to me? Janet. Hmm? Who is it? It's me, darling, Ken. I've come to see you. Why? There have to be a reason. Now, why are you sitting here in the dark, cutting out the remains of a perfectly good day? The light hurts my eyes. I prefer being in the darkness. Oh, since when? What about all those walks we've had only the other day up on the hill? I think it's horrible. Hmm? What is? The wall. Those marks. The wall? Oh, that! That's the busy old sun trying to get a look in through the blinds. I think it's rather beautiful, those deep red lines. Ah, oh, come on, darling. Won't you come over to the window and watch the sunset with me? No. Janet, will you tell me something? That pain. After your fall, when you woke up, you had a pain in your head. Is that what's troubling you? No. Then, darling, what is it? Nothing. I keep telling you I'm quite all right. If only... If only what? My eyes. If only for a few minutes, I could close my eyes. Just for a few minutes. There we are, Mrs. Deverell. Thanks for the lift, Joseph. Um, how about coming in for a drink? You won't be home for a while. Uh, no, thank you, I won't. I must go straight back to the laboratory. I'm afraid it's going to be another long night for you. Ah, yes. Joseph, do you really think there's going to be danger? I mean, for the town. Who can tell? We have a lot of questions to answer before we know that. Would you be offended if I asked you a very personal question? I don't know. It depends. Why is it you've never married? You are very inquisitive, Mrs. Deverell. She... She must have hurt you very much, did she? Yes. You see? I know more about you than you could ever possibly know about she yourself. She died. Giving birth to our son. She was my wife. Joseph. Oh, I am sorry. I didn't realize you. <laughs> but it's no good, you know. You can't let it go on haunting you for the rest of your life. If she loved you, she wouldn't have wanted it that way. It was a long time ago, Mrs. Deverell. And I suppose that means you'll never think about marriage again. Oh, maybe. <laughs> well, uh, I'd better go in. Yes, I think so. You know, Joseph, sooner or later you're going to have to learn to forget. 
Not at all, Mrs. Deverell. My greatest problem is that I have forgotten. Much too soon. What is it, Tug? Shh. Keep your voice down, Doctor. Hmm? My wife's upstairs. I, I don't want her to know you're here. What's up? Is she ill? Well, maybe she is. She... <laughs> She's been going on a bit. Things don't mean anything. Mm -hmm. When she talks, she looks straight through you, as though you don't even exist. I'm sure she doesn't hear a thing, I say. Uh, when did this start? Well, the first time was when I tackled her about these birds we found. She said that whatever it was that killed him, it was probably all for the best. And then again, just, just a little while ago, I, I found her sitting all alone in the kitchen, in the dark. Even though it was broad daylight outside. The dark? Yes, couldn't see a thing. When I put my arms round her, she she didn't even want me to kiss her. But when I did, it was... It was like kissing a block of ice. She was cold? Yeah, absolutely freezing, poor love. Doctor, I'm scared. Imagine it, me, Tug Wilson, scared to face the darkness. What is it, Doc? What's, what's wrong with me? What's going on round here? That was grossly unfair. A beastly thing to do. I beg your pardon, my dear? I've just been reading that interview you gave to an American reporter in London. Those disgusting things you said about Joseph. Joseph? I apologize, my dear. I hadn't realized I was hurting your feelings. How many more times do I have to tell you that the only reason I went to the laboratory was to see if I could help? Mm, a great sacrifice. What's the matter with you these days? Are you suffering from some kind of persecution mania or something? Well, let's drop the subject, shall we, my dear? I've had a spitting headache all day. I don't see you as a jealous lover, Hugh. It doesn't suit you. I said drop it. <laughs> Please, dear. Oh, Hugh. Let's get away from here. Right away from all the pettiness and the small minds. No, my dear. My place is here. <sighs> it's... Very bright in this room. Right? Let's, let's go somewhere where we can forget about them all. Learn to live a life of our own. Have some fun like we used to. So hurtful to the eyes. Have you thought what's going to happen when Joseph sees that interview? Suppose he decides to stop everything and walk out on you. He will be replaced. Why do I even bother to talk to you? Shall I tell you something, Hugh? When I first met you, you were really someone to admire, to look up to. But not anymore, Hugh. These days, you only live to exist. I don't know you anymore. Would you mind if I drew the curtains, my dear? I really do find the light in here very strong. It hurts my eyes. I couldn't care less if you sit in the dark for the rest of your life. <laughs> no. I'm sure. Cool. Hey, cool. Yeah? Do you think there's a chance this stuff will get on the move again? Well, they wouldn't stick us on guard out here if it wasn't. Oh, it's a cheat, though. What is? We're calling in the RAF to clear up this dump. We're supposed to be airmen. It's a liberty. And what would you do if those concrete blocks suddenly popped out of that hole in the road and Mother Nature sent another dose of slivering muck to greet you? I wouldn't stay round to thank her. Spoken like a true Englishman. Hey, cool. What? Hey, what about a drink? What's the matter with you, son? Matter? You're forgetting Queen's regulations or something? We're on guard duty. I got some whiskey from the naffy. Ah, oh, well, under the circumstances, I suppose... Yeah, it hand it over me, rucksack. Yeah, it's uh, There's a dead set I'm not going to get through this night unless... Shut up. What is it? Can you hear something? No. Nah. Walter. Water? I could have sworn I heard running water. Oh, not again. I'm going over the other side. Have a look. See, you hang on there for You're me. joking. You won't get me staying here all on me, Todd. I'm coming with you. Are you connected to that end, Robert? Yes, I think so. Uh, you're sure it's not going to blow up on us or anything? I feel most unsafe. I wouldn't rely on it. Anyway, if we can get it up to 100 degrees, we'll at least have some idea of the effects. Now, are you ready? Ready. Right. Is anything happening? I don't know yet. Looks awfully hot inside there. It doesn't look as though it's drying. Uh, can you give me a reading? 85, 90, 95. That's it, 100. Shall I turn it off? No, no, no. Give it a few minutes. We can always boost it up if we have to. Right. 
Look, um, I'm going to see if John's found anything under the microscope. C can you cope for a while? That's all right, old boy. I'll shout good and loud if I need you. Well, what can you see, John? Uh, difficult to tell. The piece of mud I chipped off was really a bit too big for this thing. Mind you, it would be better if I could get hold of my own microscope. But uh, can you trace the salt? Oh, it's rock salt, all right, except it's even finer. More like... Hey, what the hell's this? What? Look, there, there are some small particles. Yes. It is, you know. There's a movement. Movement? What are you talking about? Joseph, either I'm going stark raving mad, or this stuff's turning back into a liquid substance right in front of me. Wait a minute. Look. Take a look through the lens here. Tell me what you can see. Now, am I mad or aren't I? No, John, you're not mad. They are tissues. Joseph, don't you see what this means? For heaven's sake, man. Make sure. Make quite sure. I am sure. An, an organic matter and geological substance. It's, it's incredible. Just a few minutes ago, that thing was dead solid. That means... It means that it has the ability to multiply, but only in its liquid state. Multiply? How much? Joseph, we've got to get the medics onto this. I've never seen anything like it before. It's way out of our... No, field. no, no. Before we say anything to anyone, let us first complete our analysis. If there are living organisms in this mud, we've got to find out where they come from and how they are formed. And most of all, somehow, we've got to determine the extent to which they are able to multiply. Joseph, that one small sample we took from Holly Mill Lane multiplied itself more than three times overnight. At that rate of expansion, it could completely swamp this area in 48 hours. I tell you, it was out of our hands. Hello? Oh, yes, Inspector. It... It's what? Yes, we did. But we had no idea it could... Pop Hell. What's the matter? All right, Inspector. Of course we will. Yes, we'll be down as soon as we can. Holly Mill Lane? Every one of the concrete blocks are out. Oh, oh no! Mud seeping out of every crack in the road. It's sliding further than it's ever done. They've got every available man they could muster fighting to clear it. Joseph, it's going to multiply, isn't it? The blasted mud's going to multiply. <coughs> What's that? Robert! 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 Are you... Joseph! Look at the tank! Grab hold of his arm, quickly! But the mud! Look at the mud! It's running out! It's running all over the place! Do what I say! Grab hold of his arm! Get him out of here! Before it's too late! That was episode three of The Slide by Victor Pemberton, with Morris Denham as Hugh Deverell, MP, and Roger Delgado as Joseph Gomez. The part of Professor Landers was played by Rolf Lefever, Dr. Ken Richards by David Spencer, Anna Deverell by Marion Matthey, and Professor Lippert by Alan McClelland. Inspector Baxter, Geoffrey Matthews, Sorensen, Fraser Carr, nursing sister, Eva Haddon, Janet Marshall, Elizabeth Proud, RAF Corporal, Anthony Hall, Tug Wilson, Stephen Jack, Mrs. Wilson, Miriam Margulies. Other parts were played by members of the BBC Drama Repertory Company. Special sound was by the BBC Radiophonic Workshop, and the recorded production was by John Tideman. The Slide, a science fiction serial in seven parts by Victor Pemberton, with Morris Denham and Roger Delgado. The Slide, episode four, Heartbeats. An explosion has rocked the school laboratory where Professor Gomez and his colleagues are conducting their experiments with the mud samples. But as night draws on, the impossible task of clearing the mud from Holly Mill Lane continues. Who's in charge of your party, Corporal? Couldn't leave the Johnson. How can we do something about that flow at the other end? We've got to try and... Lock the mud off before it reaches the farmhouse. I'll tell you, Inspector, but we're having a bit of a job of these trees. Yeah. It's popping over like nine pins. It, it must be getting at the roots or something. Well, do your best, Corporal. Right. And, Corp, 
You have my full authority to stop any of these photographers breaking the cordon, okay? Oh, I'll bet you it stretches for over a quarter of a mile now. A great, great sea of mud. Yeah. It's even right the way around the back of my place. If they can't stop it now, they never will. Now, listen to me, Mr. Wilson. We'll get this muck cleared. We've got to call our troops from every part of the country. We'll get it cleared. Well, it wouldn't be so bad if you knew what you was fighting. If one minute is solid as rock, the next is like this. I, I tell you, it's an act of God. Mr. Wilson, we're going to have to evacuate, you know. You and your wife. Evacuate? We don't risk you in that house much longer whilst all this is going on. Nobody or nothing gets me out of my house. Inspector, especially now the kids are gone. What me and Mary have worked all their lives for. Now, it. look, as fast as we clear one shovel of this mud, there's a whole heap to replace it. Sliding at a tremendous rate. Even you can see that. My morning is quite easy to be on your front doorstep. We'll take our chance. Ah, oh, well, that's up to you, Mr. Wilson. But I want you to understand that if you and your wife decide to stay put under these circumstances, neither me nor anybody else will accept responsibility for what happened. I hope that's quite clear. We stay put. Very well, Mr. Wilson. Then from now on, the responsibility is entirely yours. And yours alone. Uh, glass. From now on, we use nothing but steel. Reinforced double layer steel. Hey, there we are. Joseph, you have to tell them. You dare not keep this a minute longer. You'll have to tell them. Now drink the rest of your brandy, Robert. You'll feel better. I, I mean, I mean that if those mud samples do contain some kind of organic living matter, this could be the most phenomenal scientific discovery in geological history. Well, we have to be quite certain first. You saw it under the microscope, didn't you? Both of you. I think we have to face the fact that application of heat to the mud is quite possibly an aid to multiplication. Multiplication? You mean all those organic cells, they're increasing all the time? <laughs> there can be no other explanation. We watched it under the microscope, Robert. It moved. Right in front of our very eyes, it moved. And changed its shape, form, and color. The specimen I put under the scope was a solid, hard splinter. It hadn't been there for a couple of minutes when it started floating about, like slime from a snail. An unidentified geological substance containing living organisms. Have either of you stopped to realize just how terrifying a prospect that is? Robert, when I first saw the mud in Holly Mill Lane, I knew then that we were going to be up against something quite unique. Well, things now seem to fit into place. Why shouldn't those seismological disturbances in the English Channel have been caused by the mud's unsuccessful attempt to overflow onto the seabed? What was it to do? Find another outlet. Precisely. And isn't Redlow Town just a few miles from the Channel coastline? You're quite right. The epicenter of those earth tremors was here. But, Joseph, what about the other fissures, the overflows in the north of England and in the States? Something must be disturbing the level of the mud, forcing it out from beneath. No, I don't think so. Then what do you think, Joseph? The mud is organic. Why shouldn't it be capable of exercising its own force? We can't keep this to ourselves. The people have to be warned. We can't let them go on thinking. Let them think what they like, and for as long as they like, Robert. When we are absolutely sure, then we'll know what precautions to advise. But until then, I'll go down to Holly Mill Lane and see what I can find. Joseph, for the first time in my life, I'm truly terrified. My dear Robert, who isn't? Who isn't? Aye, aye, aye. Joseph? <coughs> Joseph, I must talk to you. Oh, Mrs. Deverell, what are you doing here? It's very late. I had to get away from the house for a while. I, I felt so shut in. I saw your car lights through the garage door, so I... But is, is anything wrong? I couldn't sleep, that's all. So much on my mind. Really? I'm worried about Hugh. He's not eating. He keeps moping about the place. He won't even talk. All he's done today is to sit in a darkened room with the curtains drawn. It's so unlike him. Well, he's tired. All this has been a great strain on him. No. I know my husband, Joseph. He's a changed man. How changed? Well, jealous, for one thing. He's not been like that all the years we've been married. Oh, he tries to pretend he's not, but he is. He practically accused me of having an... Association with you. Did you know that? Oh? Ridiculous, isn't it? I should have thought so, yes. I wish you'd try and convince him otherwise. 
Life would be much easier. He'd listen to you. I'm sorry, Mrs. Deverell, but I have no wish to become involved in domestic disagreements between you and your husband. Professor Gomez, I have no intention of trying to involve you in anything, and that is not the reason why I came in here. I may not love my husband anymore, but I do still respect him. I am very glad to hear that, Mrs. Deverell. You're an extremely vain man, Joseph. You know that. You think so? All that scientific talk of yours doesn't fool anyone. You find it just as difficult to contain your personal feelings as any other man. It's taken my husband quite a few years to discover what his true feelings are. I just hope it won't take you as long. Forgive me, Mrs. Deverell. I had not realized what an unhappy woman you are. I'm very sorry. At the present moment, Professor, my only concern is for my husband's health. It's not your sympathy I want. It's your help. Uh, <coughs> Dr. Richards. Good morning, Doctor. Sorry to wake you. It's Sister Roberts, Redlow General. Uh, uh, yes, Sister. I'm afraid we've had some trouble during the night, Doctor. We've lost your young lady, Miss Marshall. You what? Well, when Nurse went in about half an hour ago, she found the room in a terrible state. Everything's been ripped to pieces. Ripped to... What are you talking about, Sister? <laughs> Oh, my. Uh, do you know what's happened to her? No idea, Doctor. She's left all her things behind, except her dress and a raincoat. Mm. She obviously just upped and walked out in the early hours. Anyway, I think you ought to come over and have a look at your... Have house. you called Dr. Robeson yet? Yes, and I've done what he said. I've called the police. Police? It's not only Miss Marshall we're worried about, Doctor. We've seven other patients missing from the ward next door. Oh, uh... Don't cook me breakfast, love, please. I don't feel a bit hungry. Come on, you've been doing quite enough bustling around. Sit down and talk to me for a few minutes. Oh, leave me, Tug. I'm quite all right. But I'm not hungry. Leave me be. Oh, come on, Mary. No, Tug, what you doing? Let me be. Now, come and sit down. But, Tug... I, I... want to talk to you. What's so wrong about wanting to talk to me own wife? <sighs> That's better. Tug, I... Mary... I want us to get away from here. Away? I mean, right away. From Holly Mill Lane, from Red Lane. Well, I from... like it here. It's our home. Why should we leave it? Because it's different now. It's not like it used to be. Things have changed. Are you scared, Tug? Scared? No, I'm, I'm not scared of the mud. First I thought I was, but I'm not. Then why leave? Well, because... Because we've reached a time in life when we ought to start thinking about doing different things. No. We could go down to Jack Percy in Torquay. You'd like that. Bit of sea air. Do you the world of good. You and his missus get on like a house on fire. Why, you two would soon solve all the world's problems. No, Tug. But, Mary, there's so much I want to do. So much I want both of us to do. We've got enough money saved to take us round the world and back if we want. What's the use in spending the rest of our days digging and plowing? You don't know how to face things, do you, Tug? You never could. Mary, love, please. If you won't do it for yourself, do it for me. Please. Oh, better make it sausages. The bacon's a bit streaky. All right, then. Let's have some light. Chug, no, what you doing? Leave those curtains closed. I'm sick of the dark. Stop I'm it, I'm sick Chug. of wandering around this place in the dark. Please. God gave us good light to feast our eyes on, so let's see it. Oh. And breathe God's air. Chug, please, uh. don't. I can't stand the light. It hurts my eyes. But well, why, Mary, why? Uh, You've always loved the sunshine ever since please. you was a young girl. What's happened to you, Mary? What's happened? Please, Tug. Come on, love, let's go to church. We'll just about make it if we hurry. No. But you never miss church. It's one of the things you look forward to all week. I don't want to go to no church. Not never again. What? They're all hypocrites. Every one of them. I despise them. Mary. Church. What does it mean? It's just crosses and stone and bells. It don't mean nothing. Nothing at all. If I thought you meant that, Mary, my love, I'd have given up hope for you a long time ago. That I can assure you. Mrs. Devereux! Mrs. Devereux! Oh, Mrs. Luke. 
Good morning. I was very surprised not to see your husband in church this morning. Uh, is he in London? No, it's just that he couldn't spare the time. He's rather immersed in his work at the moment. Oh, poor man, such a burden to carry. This business in Holly Mill Lane, he's rather taking its toll of it all, isn't he? Yes. I noticed there were fewer men at the service than ever been before. Oh, dear. Where's it all going to end? I mean, if... If you'll excuse me, Mrs. Luke, I, I promise to get back. Uh, Mrs. Everett. I don't want to think I'm prying into your affairs, my dear. I know how worried you must be. But I have enough respect for your husband to offer him a friendly word of advice. Yes. I met Andrew Thompson just before the service, he and his wife. You know he's on the town council. Of course. Well, there's a lot of discontent at the town hall, Mrs. Everett. Discontent? Apparently, they've asked your husband three times to attend emergency council meetings to discuss the mud. Three times in two days. Did you know that? Uh, no, as a matter of fact, I didn't. He's refused every time. Under the present circumstances, I would have thought the first duty of an MP is to keep in close contact with the local authorities. And why is she still refusing to call on the government for help? Refusing? And Mr. Thompson says your husband is quite adamant. He says the town is his responsibility. He says he won't call on the government until it's absolutely necessary. When is that going to be? I'd like to know. I do wish you'd preach on Mrs. Everett. I will, Mrs. Luke, and thank you. I'd hate him to get involved in some nasty publicity, especially with all those newspaper persons hanging about. I mean, you know what they're like. Oh, she's gone. Ah, ah my father used to bring me up here when I was a kid. It used to be quite a beauty spot. He wouldn't think so to look at it now. Oh, it's good to feel fresh air again, eh? Yeah. You ought to get some rest, you know, Professor. Yeah. You've been out here most of the night. You'll crack up if you're not careful. Even I've had a couple of hours. You know, Inspector, there's mm. a lot to be admired in the English countryside. Uh, Everything is, you know, is so much richer, so much fuller. Mm. You mean was, don't you? Was? What happened to the grass? Oh. What's happened to the trees? Burning. Withering. Fading. Inspector, what is that place over there? Can eh? you see on the banks of the river, on the other side of the town? Yeah. Oh, that, yeah. Oh, that's the old windmill. Oh. I've been used for years. Some old Dutch eccentric built it. Sort of a status symbol, I suppose. <laughs> Why? Well, it's, it's just that the, the grass around it looks more faded than the grass on the other side of the river. Yeah, that's true. Well, last time I was over there, the place was running wild with weeds and grass. Hmm. Good place gone to pot, if you ask me. Um, look, Professor, uh -huh. I want to ask you a question. How much farther is all this going to go? I wish I could tell you. I think you will agree that this is one of those freaks of nature that needs a lot of study before we can hope to understand it. It's not easy to come to terms with something you're not used to. Someone you don't expect. Uh, as far as nature is concerned, Inspector, we should always be ready to expect. Uh, we have no right not to be prepared. My countrymen, they learned that a long time ago. Yeah. Us poor old English are a bit like that, aren't we? We are more than capable of tackling most things, but we're hardly ever ready for it until after it's happened. Who is? Yeah. Professor, I don't care for myself, of course, but the people round here want to know what's going on. Inspector, you've got to realize that this disturbance, or whatever you like to call it, is a threat not only to you people down here, but perhaps to people all over the world. That was people, sister. It's a terrifying thought. Have you questioned the others in the ward? Nobody seems to know anything, Doctor. The whole business seems to have been carried out in absolute secrecy. Oh. That's why we can't help thinking that it must have been planned. Well, what sort of cases were they? Two of them were quite elderly, but nearly all of them were road casualties or injuries from the earth tremor. Hmm. Concussion, that sort of thing. Much the same as Miss Marshall. It's very suspicious. Oh, here we are, fourth floor. This way, Doctor. Oh, yes. And uh, are the police going to start a search? What else can they do? Legally, any one of them are entitled to walk out whenever they wish. Of course. The locker room at the other end of the ward had been broken into. They took all their own clothes. I wouldn't have worried quite so much, but after being in such close contact with your Miss Marshall for these last few days, I should say her giving us the slip like this is a serious pointer to her mental stability. I know what you mean, sister. And I only hope you're wrong. And this thing you say about Janet being violent takes quite a lot of believing, you know. It's so completely unlike her. Well, that may be as it is, Doctor. 
But before you take any notice of me, I suggest you look in here at her room. Oh, my. This? I'd hardly call this the work of a normally balanced young girl. Would you, Doctor? You? You? Where are you? Oh, darling. It's a beautiful day outside. You should try and get some fresh air. Let's draw the curtain. No. It's so gloomy in here. Just leave them, please. I'm perfectly all right if you'll just leave me alone. Very well. You were missed in church today, Hugh. Nearly everybody said it wasn't the same without you sitting in your usual place. Even the vicar. He said he thought he'd never see a Sunday morning with that front pew empty. Mind you, you weren't the only one. There were hardly any men in church at all. I suppose most of them are down at Holly Mill Lane. Hmm? Yes, I suppose they are. Darling... After service, I, I saw Mrs. Luke. Really? Why haven't you been to any of the emergency meetings at the town hall? I don't go to meetings at the town hall. They bore me. Andrew Thompson says the council have asked you three times to attend, but you keep refusing. Why, Hugh? I shouldn't concern yourself with Mr. Thompson's political opinions, my dear. I'm well accustomed to his agitations, both here and in London. But he's a powerful man, Hugh. He's only got to say a word to those press people and it'll be splashed across every page in the country. So? Is it true you're not going to ask the government to declare Redlow a distressed area? Yes. But why? Everybody's always offering advice. Always knowing what the situation demands better than anyone else. Better than those who are qualified to know. When are people going to realize this is my town? I can do what I want with it. It's their town, too. I want you to try and restore some of the respect these people used to have for you. People don't interest me anymore, Anna. They made this world for themselves. It's up to them to try and live in it the best way they can. If things get out of hand, if you let them, Hugh, they'll only blame one person. Is that what you want? Do you want to destroy yourself? Let things take care of themselves, my dear. It's the only way. Then there's nothing I can do for you anymore. Anna, darling, where did you go last night? Last night? You left this house shortly before 11 o'clock last night. You did not return until a quarter to one this morning. I... I went to get some air. Air? Because I'm tired of sitting all day in a room with the curtains drawn. Tired of being scared to open my mouth. To breathe the same stale, stagnant air. As though I were being locked up. I trust the learned Professor Gomez was able to offer a... a suitable alternative. Will you get out of my way, please, Hugh? <laughs> you haven't changed a bit, have you, my dear? Just like the good old days a long time ago, or... Is it? What's wrong with you? Don't you trust me anymore? You'll never change, Anna, will you? Not that I expect you to. It wouldn't be fair. You. Anyway, please, you're hurting me. I'm sure you'll find the South please, American tribe is much more agreeable, Hugh. my dear. At least it'll be a novelty. <laughs> Fascinating. But how on earth did you manage to record it, John? It took me over two hours. Every time I put the lead wires in, they just burnt away. Oh. You've got to be so careful the way you handle the stuff. But, Joseph, surely this proves beyond a shadow of doubt the mud's a living thing, the way it moves, this extraordinary sound. It proves an awful lot, Robert. But what it doesn't prove is the exact nature and the extent. And I think that what we have here goes beyond the normal bounds of clear definition. What do you mean, Joseph? John, let's have that tape recorder on again. But this time, can you see if you can shape the background a little? I don't know. I'll try. Why? What are you thinking? Uh, I have a feeling that somewhere in the middle, there's, there's an indication. There's something staring us right in the eyes. Okay, all set. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, you see? I thought so. What? Sounds exactly the same to me. Listen carefully, Robert. You mean to tell me that you can't hear it? 
I can. You mean that throbbing sound? That's it. You say rhythmical pulsation. You hear it now, Robin? But I can hear it, but I'm damned if I know what... Yes, I know. I see what you mean now. It can't possibly be a heart. Oh, yes, Robert. Indeed, it possibly can. Every living creature must have a center. It has to. Incredible. Terrifying. I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. You see now, Robert? It's alive. This monstrous thing is alive. That's why we haven't been able to control it. But there must be a center. Well, then, for God's sake, man, let's find this center. Destroy it before it's too late. Before it breaks out anywhere else. Find it? Yes, we will find it. When we know where... And how many? How many? It's expanding. It's growing all the time. In just a few days, it's increased and developed beyond all known proportions. Are we to believe that just one center can be responsible for so much? No. This mud is creeping up on us. Slowly but surely, it is creeping up on us all. Yeah, Pinky Winky, Pinky Key, Pinky Winky. Come along, Pinky Dolly. Doctor, do take care of my little birdie. Oh, good evening, Doctor. I am sorry to bother you like this, especially on a Sunday evening. Uh, yes, Mrs. Luke, what is it? It's Pinky. I think she's suffering. Hmm? I got a bit worried when you think what's happening to all those poor animals and birds around. Oh, what's wrong with it? She. Uh, a she. She just won't eat her food, and she was very sick after the grapes. Grapes? Apart from her seed, I wouldn't dream of giving anything but the best white grapes. All right, Mrs. Luke, leave her with me. I can't promise to do anything tonight. I've still got quite a few calls. Thank you, like. Doctor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good night, Mrs. Luke. A call in tomorrow. Oh, Doctor. Hmm? I'm very glad to see Miss Marshall's back on her feet again. You must have been very worried. I beg your pardon? Yes, you're Miss Marshall. She's out of hospital, isn't she? <laughs> she must be because I saw her. You saw Janet? Uh, yes. Mrs. Luke, quickly now, please tell me where. Near the old Dutch bill by the river. What time was this? Oh, I, I, I'm not quite sure. A couple of hours ago, I suppose. I was on my way home. Did you speak? Long. Was she all right? Well, we didn't exactly speak. I waved. But I don't think she actually saw me. She was too busy talking to that other woman. Which one? That's Mrs. Wilson from Holly Mill Lane. Nasty thing she is. Never could bear the woman. And they both went towards the Dutch oh, mill? No, 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 no. Only Miss Marshall. Mrs. Wilson left her after a few minutes and made her way back towards the town. Did you actually see where she went? I mean, Miss Marshall, did you go into the mill? Dr. Richard, it is not my habit to go around snooping on people. I mean, what business is it of mine where the young lady goes? Yes, I think she did go into the mill as a matter of fact. I must say, I did think it was a bit funny. Uh, Mrs. Time. Luke, do you know the mill? Well, yes, of course, don't you? No. Will you take me there? Well, I... I, I uh, I'll just get my coat. But, but what about Binky? Doctor, what about my Binky? No, gentlemen, I'm sorry. I cannot agree. But, Mr. Deverell, I can assure you Professor Gomez has proved to us without doubt the unparalleled dangers that exist in this mud. But what dangers? At this stage, I think it will be inadvisable to inform you of the precise nature of our discoveries, Mr. Deverell. Oh, really, Professor? Why is that? I'm not prepared to say anything further than that. We don't want to start a panic, that's why. But we must have your full cooperation, Mr. Deverell. We need more men, more equipment, to put an immediate halt to the overflows, both in Holly Mill Lane and the Cane. That can't be done, I'm afraid. But for heaven's sake, sir, why not? The government should be informed immediately of the gravity of the situation. Declare Redlow and surroundings a disaster area. This is a local matter. It does not concern the government. But it's no longer just a local matter. This is now a national emergency. We refuse to accept the responsibility for not stopping a menace which could threaten the very foundations of this town, and perhaps a lot more. Nobody's asking you to accept responsibility for anything, Professor. I merely ask you to... Reduce your measure of alarm. Alarm? Mr. Deverell, you amaze me. Mr. Deverell, we have found the mud contains living organisms. Oh? Really? Do you understand the significance of that, sir? Do you understand that we're going to have to face an enemy that science has never before encountered? Science was created by the people for the people, Professor. I find your theory preposterous. It is not a theory, sir. It is fact. Oh, for heaven's sake, Joseph, tell him. I don't think that's at all necessary, Robert. I'm sure Mr. Deverell is more than aware of his responsibilities. 
especially towards his own countrymen. I leave my countrymen to make their own decisions, Professor Gomez. I'm sure a man of your background will find that rather difficult to comprehend. I take it you are referring to my political life? Certainly. When I first read about you, Mr. Deverell, I was still a young man at university. Oh, I, I used to read your speeches with great interest. You were something of a hero amongst our older generation. I'm flattered. But believe me, it did not need a very high standard of education to understand what sort of a person you really were. Oh, not that you didn't mean every word you ever said. It's just that it's not easy to admit how dishonest one can be. Not only to others, but to oneself. I'm afraid that is the hardest part of all. Unfortunately, you never did admit it, did you, Mr. Deverell? And you still haven't. <laughs> Goodbye, Professor Gomez. Have you any idea what you've just done? Yes, I think I have. The man was becoming an increasing bore. His departure seems just about the most satisfactory compromise I can think of. I hope you're wrong, Mr. Deverell. For the sake of yourself and all of us, I hope you're wrong. Can you see anything? No. It looks as though this old mill's full of junk. <laughs> and cobwebs. Well, let's have a look inside. Smells of old rope and dead fish. Janet! Janet, darling! Are you in here? She must be out of her mind as she is. How many floors are there? Can you remember? Uh, three, I believe. The old fellow who used to own the place lived on the top floor. Mind you. Shh! Shh. What is it? I thought I heard something. Uh, I'm not at all scared, you know. I don't believe in ghosts. Janet! Is that you? No. Perhaps she went back to the farmhouse. We should have checked with Mrs. Wilson, sir. Oh, oh. There it is again. Is there another floor down below? No, no. Only the landing stage. It was only big enough to take a couple of small rowing boats. Should we look down there, do you think? Uh, how do we get down? Uh, there's a trap door just at the side of your foot. Uh, oh, this? Now, do be careful, uh, Doctor. Uh, I shouldn't uh, think anyone's been down there for years. The steps uh, might be dangerous. Uh, Janet! Janet! Damn. What's the matter? The bulb in your torch is gone. Do you have any matches? No, no, it, it's all right. I've got some. Now, be careful, Mrs. Luke. It's very slippery on these steps. What a dreadful smell. Everything just came. The sooner they pull this place down, the better. I've always said these buildings are so unsightly, especially along the edge of the... Doctor! Hmm? Doctor! The corner of the side! Look! Where? Oh, my... Janet! Get away from there! Get away! That was episode four of The Slide by Victor Pemberton, with Morris Denham as Hugh Deverell, MP, and Roger Delgado as Joseph Gomez. The part of Professor Landers was played by Rolf Lefever, Dr. Ken Richards by David Spencer, Anna Deverell by Marion Maffey, and Professor Lippert by Alan McClelland. Inspector Baxter, Jeffrey Matthews, RAF Corporal, Anthony Hall, Tug Wilson, Stephen Jack, Nursing Sister, Eva Haddon, Mrs. Wilson, Miriam Margulies, Mrs. Luke, Noel Hood. Other parts were played by members of the BBC Drama Repertory Company. The special sound was by the BBC Radio... Science fiction serial in seven parts by Victor Pemberton, with Morris Denham and Roger Delgado. The slide, episode five, Danger Point. <laughs> Janet Marshall has disappeared from her room at Redlow Hospital. In the darkness of the old Dutch mill on the banks of the River Holly, Mrs. Luke and Dr. Richards find the girl crouching by a wall. Desperately, they struggle to get her out into the open air. Take her other arm, Mrs. Luke. That's it. Oh, oh, thank, thank heaven for the fresh air. Oh, oh, I thought I was going to suffocate in there. Hadn't we better see if we can get hold of someone right away, Dr. Richards, before the mud gets a grip down there? Janet, darling, listen to me. 
What were you doing down there by the landing stage? Tell me. You you shouldn't have come. You should have left me. Janet, that mud was seeping through the wall. In just a few minutes, you'd have... What were you doing, crouching all alone in the dark? Won't you talk to me? There's nothing to talk about. I want to help you. I don't need your help. Nobody's help. Why did you leave the hospital like that? I couldn't bear it any longer. I couldn't bear it. But in the middle of the night... It was the best time. The only time. I didn't want to go through another day with all those people coming in and out and... And staring at me as though I was some sort of caged animal. Look, it's not safe for you to be wandering around on your own in the middle of the night. Darling, you're ill. Stop saying that. How many more times have I got to tell you that I am not ill? I just want to be left alone, that's all. Janet, what happened to all those other people? I don't know what you're talking about. What other people? I want to know. Seven patients disappeared from the ward next to your room at the hospital and all at exactly the same time. Now, what's happened to them? Oh, look, darling, if you know where they are, you've got to tell me. We've had half the county constabulary out looking for them all day. Their relatives are going half out of their minds. I'm sorry. Mrs. Luke. Yes? Can you drive? Why, yes, not, not for years, though. I have a bike. Oh, will you take my car and drive Miss Marshall straight back to the hospital? No, if you no, ask for Dr. Robeson, no. he'll know what to do. No, I'm not going back to that place. Not now, ever. listen, no. Janet. If you think anything of me, anything at all, you'll do as I tell you. We'll go back to that hospital and let them take care of you. If you don't, well, it's up to you. It's 11 o'clock. What are you going to do, Doctor? Oh, they're so busy trying to get rid of the mud on the other side of the town, nobody seems to know it's over here as well. The sooner somebody does, the better. I'm going to see if I can get hold of the inspector. He said something about them going to seal the holly track caves with explosives hmm? at about half past 11. Oh, I'll just about make it. I'll call the hospital and tell them you're on your way over. You can meet me there. Right. Sure you can cope? Perfectly. Now, Janet, don't let me down. See you. Are you ready, my dear? <laughs> now, we're not going to be silly about this, are we? You'll find I'm just as determined as you are. Right then, give me your hand. <laughs> Wait a minute. What have you got there? No. No. Let no. me see. No. Let me see. Oh. Oh, Miss Marshall. How could you? A little sparrow. A poor, dead little sparrow. <laughs> As the dust clears, take a few of your blokes around the back of the crag, Sergeant Johnson. Very good, sir. Make sure there's no mud coming out anywhere. I want this place sealed in once and for all, okay? Right you are, sir. Inspector, can't you get some of your people down to that mill? I'm scared it's going to start flowing out any minute. I'm sorry, Doctor. There's nothing I can do until I've got this mess cleared up. But we don't get those caves sealed now. There'll be no holding them up. Can't you get any more help? I've got half my blokes here, the other half down in Holly Mill Lane, and most of them haven't had a wink of sleep in 24 hours. That makes uh, five overflows now. Five? Yeah. Apart from the lane, the mill, and here, there's one just at the back of the Regal Cinema. But that's practically inside the town. There's a main shopping area. I know, there. I know, I know. We had to clear the cinema during the last performance tonight, just in case. Well, where's the other? Um, Center Heights. What? The new apartment block? Yep. It's about a 25-yard gap in the lawns at the back, right alongside the fountain. <laughs> it's happening, Doc. I tell you, it's all happening. Oh, for heaven's sake, sister, what do you mean she's not arrived? Well, I left her with Mrs. Luke over an hour ago. They were coming straight here to the hospital. I'm sorry, Dr. Richards. I gave strict instructions to the porter on the gate to bring them up as soon as they were here. But so far, there's been absolutely no sign of them at all. All right, sister, thank you. You can leave it with me now. Yes, Doctor. Ken, would you come into my room for a minute? Oh, yes, certainly. Now, look, Ken, something's got to be done about this. What do you mean? I mean Janet. As soon as we get her back here, she must go to psychiatry. Oh, don't talk nonsense, Michael. I'm telling you, she'll have to. Look, Janet's as sane as you or I. Are you sure? Well, let's take my reputation on it. <sighs> have you any idea why she kept herself in a darkened room all the time she was here? Well, no. To your knowledge, you're sure she's never had treatment? If you mean psychiatric, the answer's no. Not necessarily psychiatric. Ken, have you ever thought about hypnotism? Hypnotism? What are you talking about? Well, you remember old Dr. Luther... Wasn't he the old boy who was always plugging the use of hypnotic treatment in asthmatic disease? That's the man. Why? Just that I went to a few of his lectures. Most of it was a lot of old bunkum, I thought, but one or two of the practical demonstrations were quite interesting. Mm -hmm. One of his experiments was putting his patients to sleep, making them open their eyes, and then convincing them that the light was too strong for them, even though they were in a darkened area. But she's never seen a hypnotist in her life. She's had no reason to. 
And even if she had, she'd have told me. No asthma, bronchitis, no... Michael, I tell you, if she had, she certainly wouldn't have turned to hypnotism. It's not like her. <sighs> Perhaps you're right. Let's hope when we find her, we'll be able to prove otherwise. But it is an interesting thought, isn't it? <laughs> Is that the police? Yes, madam. Can I help you? Come quickly. You've got to come quickly. Where are you, madam? Look at the number of your telephone. Just tell me where you are. It's it's the crossroads. The box at the crossroads. Which crossroads, madam? Oh, never know. The river. Oh, I've got it. Are you hurt? It'll only take us five minutes to get there. No, I'm all right. Just hurry. As soon as you can. There's been an accident. Inspector, how long do you think you can hold the mud back in this sector? And look, is it possible to erect some kind of barricade near the wall of the cinema? Well, it's possible, all right, sir, but it won't do no good. We put up solid concrete blocks in Mr. Wilson's farmhouse, but they just toppled over like a pile of matchboxes. The house doesn't stand a chance now. It's surrounded on all sides. The foundation will never take the strain. Well, I've already spoken to the town council. They've agreed not to wait for Mr. Deverell any longer. Why? Why is there this change of substance during the day, Robert? You know, I feel the answer is, is so close. It, it's staring us right in the face. Yes. Professor. Uh, what is it, John? There seems to be more rock salt here than in any of the other overflows. But again, these thin green streaks, they, they mean something. I know they mean something. Five fissures in four days. And in that time, the, the mud has progressed in Holly Mill Lane alone at the rate of over a quarter of a mile each night. Mm. You both realize, don't you? These new overflows could penetrate the main thoroughfares of the town within a matter of hours. Inspector, yes. I don't care what you do or who you get, but it's imperative you spare no effort to seal these last overflows before they extend any further into the town limits. If necessary, get every man, woman and child out of here. Well, I'm beginning to think some people forget that I'm just a policeman around here. Good Scott, what's that? It, it sounds like St. Hyde's way. Uh, excuse me, gentlemen. Uh, Sarge! Sarge! Look! There's a great pall of smoke over there, whatever it is. Professor! Uh, what? Professor! Where's the devil? Professor, I need your help. My husband... Oh, what's happened? He's called a press conference at the town hall for five o'clock. Oh, what's wrong with that? Well, he has absolutely no authority to do so. I'm terrified of what he's going to say. Uh, uh, look, Mrs. Devil, Redlow is full of reporters and journalists. I don't see what he can possibly tell them that they don't already know. Professor, would you say the destruction of this town is inevitable? Because that's what my husband thinks. And that's what he's going to tell the press at his meeting this afternoon. In front of you, gentlemen, at the side of me here on the platform, you see a scale model of a town. A town greatly revered by my colleagues and friends on the town council and everywhere else. And you, ladies and gentlemen, how do you feel about it? Do these gleaming white skyscrapers thrill you? Inspire you? Excite your emotions? Because here it is, a towering tribute to man's determination to create by now, you are familiar with the events of the past few days which have brought so many of you hurrying from the far corners of the globe. But now, why is that? Is it because you really believe nature has struck a cruel blow against this small corner of the English countryside? Paralyzed a daily routine? A way of life that has continued for countless generations? Or can it be that somewhere inside each one of you there are more decisive questions yearning for an answer? Somebody do something. We can't let him go on like this. No, no, no. Wait a few minutes. I want to hear what he's going to say. Now, now most of you people here today have described in your newspapers what has happened down here as an evil freak of nature? But my friends, I can assure you it is not. Whatever evil there is, is in ourselves. <laughs> Have none of you ever tried to find a way out of stagnation? 
tried to find a new way of life, a new way of thinking, a better way. Well, I have. I have. The world, ladies and gentlemen, is on the brink of a new and exciting existence. Soon the circle will be broken. The flower will wither. Death is not something to be feared. It is not finality. Death is not finality. The man's right off his head. I wonder. We'll see if we can get down nearer the front. Yes. Follow me. We may look to the stars, ladies and gentlemen, but it won't do any good. Our hope for the future is right here on Earth. We don't have to be scared of dark anymore. Darkness is the new giver of life. The darkness. And do you know why? Do you know why? Because the sun, ladies and gentlemen, is no longer the creator. <laughs> It's all right oh, now, dear. Mrs. Hilke. Miss Marshall must have been mad or something. She could have killed both of us. Doctor, I'm telling you, she went quite berserk like a wild animal. Look, just try and remember exactly what happened. Now, why did she suddenly go like that? Was it something you said? No. For most of the time, she sat in the front seat of the side of me, just staring dead in front of her at the road. Every so often, I could see her face reflected in the wing mirror, all white and drawn. And her eyes... It was so determined. Uh, tell me how the accident happened. Well, it was those two stupid old people. They seemed to spring out from nowhere, right out of the darkness. Before I could do anything, that wretched girl had grabbed hold of the steering wheel, and we were going straight for them. There was nothing I could do. She was far too strong for me. But then, it was quite extraordinary. Just as we were about to hit them, she screamed out and swerved the car right off the road. We ended up at the bottom of the incline. Glass everywhere. I, I don't know how we weren't killed. What happened then? I suppose I must have blacked out for a few minutes. But I do remember seeing that girl scrambling up the glass verge with the two old people. Where they went from there, I don't know. Uh, sister, could either of these two old people be from the hospital here? I don't know, Doctor. There are so many of them missing now, it's hard to keep track. It was so awful to see the three of them all standing on the road at the top, just staring down at me. Do you know, I, I really think they were... Wishing me dead. Oh, Mrs. Luke. Uh, Mrs. Luke, have you any idea in which direction Janet went? Was it back towards town? I've told you, I don't know. I feel so guilty to have let you down like this. You should never have trusted me with her. She's a very sick girl, Doctor. Yes, I know. To think of her wandering around the countryside all alone like that in the dark and then hiding in disused buildings, carrying those poor little creatures about with her. Creatures? Yes. Soon after you left us, I found she was holding on to a poor, dead little bird. What? A little sparrow. When I tried to take it away from her, she just pushed me aside and threw it into the river. I think even you'll have to agree, Doctor, it's only a warped mind that wants to do things like that. A very warped mind indeed. Mr. Deverell, sir. Yes, your question. I'd like to ask you why Redlow has still not been declared a disaster area. Yes. Surely an appeal to the Prime Minister is well overdue. We are perfectly capable of dealing with our own problems in our own time. But the situation's getting out of hand. You can't possibly deny the implications. Implications, of sir? What implications? Mr. Deverell, hasn't anyone bothered to tell you? People are already being evacuated from their homes in four different areas of the town. <laughs> Do they have to wait until it reaches your home before something is done? Yes. Why are you blind? Why are you all so blind? For the first time. The first time. You are privileged to witness a new evolution. A turning point in the history of mankind. I implore you not to scorn it. Do not regard the mud as your enemy. It is our salvation. That is just where you're wrong, Mr. Deverell. In the interest of public safety, ladies and gentlemen, I beg you to disregard anything you've heard from this man during the course of the last hour. All you, ladies and gentlemen, gathered here, are well acquainted with the innumerable natural disorders which frequently ravage the surface of this earth. 
But now I ask you to consider this. What kind of disorder is it that can produce tremors, fissures, and a discharge of an unidentified substance in an area which is generally accepted by us all to be outside the seismic belt? <laughs> how great, how great our danger is, I will let you decide. I will ask nothing of you other than you listen to the latest evidence at our disposal. No, no, don't listen to these men. They bring you nothing but lies. It's up to you, ladies and gentlemen. It's up to you. Let them speak. Yeah. Let's hear them. Let's hear them. Very well. Professor Gomez and Professor Lippitt, will you come up here, please? There's still a few people in the top flat. Probably the lift cut out soon after the fire broke out. I'm afraid there's not going to be much left of center right after this. I think Star. Anybody know? A couple of the portals smelt the fumes. Unfortunately, the generator blew out just as they got there. The generator? So it was an electrical failure. Yes, the whole building was blacked out from top to bottom. That blasted stuff. What are you talking about? What stuff? Well, the mud. The mud? In the basement. It was full of it. Over a foot deep. The fire boys nearly out of fit when they saw it. Inspector! Inspector, we, we need you at the Wilsons. What, Tug Wilson? What's up? He's barricaded himself inside the farmhouse. What? Him and his missus. We thought we'd give him a hand to move some of his stuff out, but every time you get anywhere near the place, he takes a pot shot at you. What, you mean Tug and his missus firing at you? You just come down there and try poking your head out. But both of them have got a couple of 303s. And I'll tell you this, if somebody don't get them out of there in the next half hour or so, that mud's going to be on a move again. And the mud's already pressing against every wall of that house. Every single wall. Ladies and gentlemen, for many years, we scientists, we've struggled to understand why the Earth begins to, to shake, to tremble, to open out into great chasms. We have tried to discover what great energies they are that clasp beneath the surface of this, this great crust we walk upon. But, as Professor Landers has told you, the one thing we have known until now is that such disturbances have nearly always been confined to those areas of the world which we refer to as the seismic belt. Now, le let us for the moment disregard the fact that the British Isles are outside the normal seismic belt. Then, let us try to find out why the situation which has developed here is such a critical one. Now, in front of you, ladies and gentlemen, you see a scale model of Redlow New Town. The first fissure, that is to say, the first fracture in the soil's crust appeared here, the area known as Holly Mill Lane. Then here, 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 and here. Five distinct fractures, not all in one place. But, ladies and gentlemen, look at the model and see for yourselves the almost perfectly symmetrical pattern the circle formed around the town. <laughs> Professor, are you trying to tell us there is some kind of significance in the positioning of these fissures? Sir, the overflow of this substance, which we have come to think of as mud, I must tell you now, I firmly believe to be a dangerous threat to us all. <laughs> this mud, ladies and gentlemen, is a killer. <laughs> now, please, please, please. And for all we know, it may have been lying in the bowels of the earth for thousands of years. But I can tell you that my own investigations have proved that the mud was unable to find an outlet on the seabed of the English Channel. Now, it has found that outlet here. And I am convinced that it intends to hold on to it at all costs. Because, ladies and gentlemen, there is no doubt this mud has the intelligence to do so. Uh, uh, professor! Uh, professor! Please, please, uh, your question, uh, Peter. Please, let uh, Professor Gomez, I'd like to ask you, sir, uh, what theories you have as to the cause of these disruptions? Well, Would you rule out the possibility of nuclear testing, for instance? Uh, no, sir, I would not. Oh, come, come, Professor. You must forgive my saying, but your past sympathies with the so-called pacifist inclined group oh. is well known to all. Oh. Oh. This, is, this is hardly the platform for 
on nuclear disarmament campaign. Be, be honest with us, sir. Can you really expect us to believe that a geological substance is capable of determining its own movement? No. No, I can't expect you to believe that. I can't expect anyone to. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to ask you to listen to my colleague, Professor Lippert. Our samples, ladies and gentlemen, were taken from the overflows of fissures in both Holly Mill Lane and the Holly Crag Caves. Their appearance remained green and slimy, rather like the discharge from a snail or slug, except for periods during the day when they reverted back to a solid block formation. A microscopic examination at first showed nothing except the presence of small particles of rock salt. It was not until a later stage that we realized the specimen was multiplying itself at a tremendous rate every few seconds. Multiplying? Well, how could it possibly do that, Professor? Uh, my analysis of the samples proved beyond the shadow of a doubt the existence in the mud of living organisms. Living organisms? <laughs> my colleagues and I, my colleagues and I have come to the conclusion that the mud is a single living thing. <laughs> and capable of an acid-like destruction of anything or anybody it comes into contact with. Oh, for heaven's sakes, man, do you realize what you're saying? Ladies and gentlemen, the mud is a living thing containing an unmistakable heartbeat, which we have measured at the rate of 72 per minute, and that, my friend, I'm sure you will know, is comparable to that of any adult human being. But if this is true, this surrounding of Redlow could be the first step towards the ultimate destruction of this town. Not only this town, my friend. Remember this. Every minute we allow this monster to exist, it doubles and perhaps even trebles its strength. Time is against us, ladies and gentlemen. Make no mistake about it. Either we find a way to destroy it now, or we'll let it destroy us completely and irrevocably. I should keep me on cover if I wish you, Inspector. I'll will some brush to red off if you're not careful. How much longer have we got? I shouldn't imagine more than a few minutes at the most. The top of the mud's already got a shine on it. That's a sure sign it's beginning to soften up. Inspector. A vicar. What are you doing here, sir? I want to speak to the Wilsons. Will you let me pass, please? Oh, it's no use. There's nothing you can do for them now. Mr. and Mrs. Wilson are my parishioners. They're church-going folk. I'm sure they'll listen to me. You put one foot out there, sir, and they'll blow your head off. Believe me. I've got to try. I have to. Please. Please. You? Hello, darling. Don't you staring at the model like that. It won't help. Everyone's gone. Come on. I've got the car outside. Let's go home. Has no home. Oh, you. Why did you do it? What made you say all those things? Your, your whole dream, everything you've ever fought for, all gone just in a few minutes. Why, darling? Look at it. My town. My dream. You made it a reality. You should be proud. Proud? Proud to have been a part of man's plans for ruthless corruption, is that it? Corruption? Corruption, expansion, domination, call it what you like. An attempt to deny nature its very right to exist. You think I'm proud of that? Proud to be an accomplice to evil? You stop talking like yes, that, Yes, you evil. wanted me to create this, didn't you, didn't you? You encouraged me when it, it's no good, it's no good. Only nature has the right to create. Only she has the power to stop us from exploiting corruption and evil. You, what you say? The earth was created for and by nature. When are you going to realize that? You, you let go of my arm, you're hurting me. <laughs> they think they know, but they don't, none of them. When the darkness comes, they won't be able to shield behind the sun anymore. You! <laughs> you what are you doing with that stick? Stop saying put it down! Not any more! Yeah. 
Something I should have done a, a long time ago. And it, it's still not too late. Not too late! Mr. Wilson! Mr. Wilson! Can you hear me? Get out of there, Vicar. This is nothing to do with you. For heaven's sake, man, use your senses. The mud is already beginning to soften. Leave your farmhouse before it's too late. Nobody takes away what belongs to me. But don't you understand? You're endangering your life. Those walls won't be able to take the strain for much longer. Don't listen to him, Tug. He's just trying to trick us. He's no different to the rest of them. Go back to your church, vicar. Tell them some of your lies. You don't mean nothing to us now. Go back. Please, Mrs. Wilson. I beg of you both. Your house will be rebuilt. Don't sacrifice yourselves for an unworthy cause. Don't abandon your faith. Everything you ever believed in. We'll help you. I promise we'll help you. Give me that rifle. No, 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 wait. no don't. What are you trying to do? Kill him or something? Don't abandon! Don't you ever try that again. We're not murderers. Oh, you're a fool, Tug Wilson. Don't you think I can see through his lies and his promises? It's always been like that, and it always will, whilst we let it. He's always been a good friend to us. Perhaps he's right. Perhaps we are causing a lot of misery for no reason. No reason? This is our house, Tug. We built it, you and me, with our own bare hands. But if it's true what they say, if it is dangerous... Oh, dangerous? I don't want to take no chances. And I can't bear being locked away like this. It, it's so hot here. I, I feel stifled. It's not so bad, is it, love? At least we're together. That's what you always wanted, isn't it? What's that? It's nothing. Don't worry, love. There's it, 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 a ceiling. Look, it, it's shaking. It's all right, love. This is what we've been waiting for, you and me, all our lives. This is just a start. Don't it make you feel good, my love? Don't it make you feel good? The walls, the walls, it's, it's all got to cave in on it. We've got to get out of here quick. We've beaten them now, Tuck. You and me, we've, we've beaten a lot of them. Put your arms around me, come to no, me. No, no, I'm suffocating, I tell you. I've got arms of air. Ah. Help! Somebody help us! Help! Hold on to me, Tuck! Hold on! And we'll never be parted again! That was episode five of The Slide by Victor Pemberton, with Morris Denham as Hugh Deverell, MP, and Roger Delgado as Joseph Gomez. The part of Professor Landers was played by Rolf Lefevre, Dr. Ken Richard by David Spencer, Anna Deverell by Marion Mathey, and Professor Lippert by Alan McClelland. Inspector Baxter, Geoffrey Matthews, Mrs. Luke, Noel Hood. Janet Marshall, Elizabeth Proud, Sergeant Johnson, Wilfred Babbage. Nursing sister, Eva Haddon. Tug Wilson, Stephen Jack, Mrs. Wilson, Miriam Margulies. Other parts were played by members of the BBC Drama Repertory Company. The Slide, a science fiction serial in seven parts by Victor Pemberton, with Morris Denham and Roger Delgado. The Slide, episode six, Time Limit. Tug Wilson and his wife have been trapped in their farmhouse, which has been reduced to a heap of rubble by the surging force of the mud overflow. Redlow, Newtown itself, is now a major disaster area. See Charlie calling Redlow Control. See Charlie calling Redlow Control. Are you receiving me? Over. Control to see Charlie. Control to see Charlie. Receiving you. Go ahead, please. Over. I'm following a course due west of the Holly River. Just coming over the town centre now. Looks pretty hectic down there. What are they doing anyway, all those trucks and lorries? Like a ruddy circus. Over. They're getting the hell out of there, chum, wouldn't you? Over. True, true. The streets look as though they're crawling alive with that stuff. Now look, Control. Listen carefully, please. 
This is my third circuit around the town. Have you got that? Over. Go ahead, please. Over. So far, I've seen two slides of mud in a small field at the back of the skyscraper block. But that is what's left of it. Then there are a couple more alongside the railway line, about 200 yards outside Redlow Station. I should warn them if I was you. Over. Thank you, C. Charlie. Message received and understood. Please complete one more circuit, then return to base. And whatever you do, chum, keep your eyes open. Out. Pardon, Johnson. Sir? Take two men and get those people out of that house. I gave you orders to get everybody out of this street by 11 o'clock. Now, what's up with you? We're going to do everything myself. I can't help it, Inspector. There's some old dear called Mrs. Luke trying to get the boys to put a piano on the truck. It's a hell of a job. Well, get her out of there. Unless she wants the whole street to come down on top of her. And a piano. Yes, sir. Is that likely so soon, do you think, Inspector? Ah, uh, I really don't know, sir. But after last night with the Wilsons, I'm not taking any chances. There's no gas, water, electricity. Can't even get a telephone line through to London. The mud's been seeping up through these drains in the road all night. Oh, you must blame yourself, you know. What happened to the Wilsons was not your fault. No, sir. And whose fault was it? I've known Tug Wilson and his missus for years. Ever since I left the beat. When are we going to see the back of this, Professor? We have to move fast. That's all I can tell you. Well, I hope somebody comes up with a bright idea sooner or later, before it's too late. It's not the mud that scares me so much as people. What do you mean? Do you know what they were doing in the town last night? No. Right in the center of the main high street, looting. Looting? Mm-hmm. The same level-headed British public, smashing shop windows, swiping everything they could lay their hands on. Oh, I don't suppose you can blame them, really. When the unexpected turns into a nightmare, it's bound to turn them into animals. Mm -hmm. Inspector, how can I get down into those sewers? Do what, sir? There's obviously a factor down there somewhere. It's just possible we can do something if we can find out which way the mud is moving. I'm sorry, sir. I can't allow that. It's much too dangerous for you to go wandering through the town sewers on your own. <laughs> That's easily settled. Come with me. Uh, <clears throat> well, I... I don't know about that, sir. You told us yourself. That mud's alive. You never know what he might be capable of doing. Not during the day, Inspector. You can see for yourself it's as hard as concrete. Now, come on. It won't take more than ten minutes. I just want to have a look. Yeah. Oh, very well, sir. I'll see if I can get hold of a torch. But I warn you, Professor Lippert, one peep out of that stuff while we're down there and you won't see me for dust. That I promise you. Well, now, Doctor, what do you think? Yes, it's a heart, all right. But a living organism in a geological substance. You've had the chance to study the mud sample under the microscope, Doctor. What more proof do you need? Well, it's just that it takes quite a bit of getting used to. This, of course, does answer quite a few questions. Such as? Well, if we're to believe that this mud is alive, with functioning brain cells, then we must also believe that it's capable of exercising its own intelligence. You mean equal to that of a human being? And maybe more, Professor. Oh, In fact, the evidence at our disposal is now too overwhelming to think otherwise. I don't quite follow you. Well, during the past few days, our surgeries throughout the town have been crowded with patients complaining of almost identical symptoms. Oh, on the face of it, quite ordinary. You know, headaches, sickness, nausea. But... The interesting thing is the depression which follows. Depression? Yes. It's difficult to describe, really, but from nearly all these people, we've had reports of them doing the most extraordinary things. Things which are so completely alien to their own personalities. And in some cases, this has led to direct physical violence. Yes, Doctor, but isn't this a perfectly natural reaction? The hospital is still treating hordes of people for shock after the earthquake. I'm sorry, Professor, but I believe there's more to it than that. And so do my colleagues. You think that there's some connection with the mud... Is that it? Well, for instance, Professor, an old man throwing himself into the mud in the caves, people disappearing from the hospital wards in the middle of the night, yes. even Mr. Deverell with that absurd press conference of his last night, and Janet, my own fiancée who doesn't even know me anymore, roaming around the countryside heaven knows where. And then what about the wildlife? Birds, cattle, sheep, cats, dogs, dying off by the score and for no reason. Now, let me see if I understand you, Doctor. You believe that certain sections of the community are being subjected to some kind of mental pressure. Is that correct? Yes. An outside pressure trying to force its way in. Yes. And that outside pressure is the mud. Yes. Uh, but how can the mud, even with its brain cells and heartbeats, exercise any sort of pressure over the human mind? My dear Robert, in a way that we should have realized long ago. You tell him, Doctor. Hypnotism, Professor. The Art of Hypnotism. Hello? Anybody at home? Maggie, what are you 
were doing here? I didn't know you were in Redlow. I got a lift in for Maidstone. There's a blockage on the line just outside town. Even the boat train passengers had to be diverted. Yes, it's annoying. How long has it been like that? The whole night I haven't slept a wink. I suppose you know we're what you call a distressed area now. We're all being bundled off to the RAF camp at Redlow. I'm supposed to be out of here by 11, hence the mess. How are you, my dear? I'm scared, Maggie. In fact, I've never been so scared in my whole life. It doesn't sound a bit like you, Anna. You've always known how to cope in the past. Why did you come down here, Maggie? Did they send you? Oh, I suppose you could call me a sort of advance guard. There was a secret meeting at Checkers during the night. I think you'll find my arrival the first of many. Anna, what happened to you? Why, ask me. You've known him just as long. Now, don't be silly, girl. I'm not down here as a politician. You's my friend, and so are you. He's a very sick man. That's all I know. This wild press conference of his last night. He attacked everyone. The government, the party, the council, even his own original conception of the town. The whole country's buzzing with it. What's gone wrong, for heaven's sake? It's so unlike him. Perhaps you'd better see for yourself. He's in here. You? Hugh, there's someone to see you. Hugh? Hello, boy. Don't you want to see me? It's Maggie. Whereabouts are you? I can't see you in all this dark. What do you want? Oh, there you are. Why, do I have to have a reason to visit an old friend? Can't we have some light? Leave those curtains alone. But it's a lovely day outside anyway. It's silly to sit and talk in the dark so impersonal. I prefer it. Now, what do you want? Well, we were wondering, Hugh... Some of us were wondering when you're coming back. Back? Where to? Why, to Westminster. We haven't seen you at any of the meetings over the last few days. There was one at Checkers last night. We missed you. Uh, and you came all the way from London to tell me that. But my colleagues, my associates, my friends all miss me, is that it? What's the matter with you, Hugh? Don't you care about Redo anymore? You are town. You know very well all the government wants government, to do. Government, it... my dear, dear friend. When are you and all the rest of those fools going to realize that the time is coming when the only form of government will be the earth itself? You, you can't sit by and see the town swallowed up right in front of your very eyes. Maggie. Oh, Maggie, can't you feel it? The vibration of an exciting new life... Hugh, how much longer do you intend to lock yourself away like this? For as long as I wish. And how long is that supposed to be? I shall know. Very well. Then I shall take Anna with me. No, Maggie. If you want to stay here and rot, you can do so. But don't expect your wife to rot with you. Right. Very well. Maggie. Maggie, what are you doing? If you won't let God's good light in, I will. No. No. Oh. Look out there, Hugh. Take a good look and feel the sun on your face. Uh, my eyes. Somebody help me. My eyes. My eyes. Well, you're grown now, sir. These uh, steps are a bit slippery. It's all right, thanks. I'm okay. I must say, it all looks very clean. I always imagined town sewers to be filthy. Oh, no. The whole system's pretty new. We only finished doing it about six months ago. Uh, so, which way? Uh, shine the torch over there, can you? Mm. Yes, well, I reckon if we follow the stream for two or three hundred yards, that way it should mm. bring us almost directly underneath the high street. Lord, what's that? <laughs> Don't worry, Professor, it's only a rat. I mean, you're well, bound to find them down here, aren't you? Yes, it's quite... <laughs> Well, as long as we don't find anything worse than that, we'll be all right. Uh, I hope. Um, this way, sir. Mum is saying so, Mum. You'd hardly call an upright piano an article for essential evacuation, now would you? Your only concern, young man, is to get it out to that lorry in one piece. It happens to be a very valuable piece of antique furniture left to me by my dear grandmother. 
one scratch or chip out of it, and I wouldn't hesitate to sue the RAF minister. In fact, I'd sooner this piano was paid than myself. Say that again. What is that? I said it'd be difficult to get it on the lorry. That is not my problem. You don't think I particularly like the idea of being thrown out of my own house and home, do you? Just perfectly ridiculous. There's no mud in You've here. You've already been told, Mrs. Luke, the foundations of the old block is very shaky. We're not even sure if the mud's not jamming up everything down below. That's why you haven't got any gas or electricity nor even water. Well, all I'm saying is they'd better make us comfortable in that billet place of yours, or I shall write a letter to my MP. It won't be the first time I've written to Mr. Devil. Yes, madam. Now be good enough to go about your work and get that piano Shut up. on the... I beg you. Be quiet, I will you? you? I shall report you. Can't you hear it? Hear it? Hear what? We're shaking. Shake. Hey, come on, Mother Luke. Oh, oh. Let's get out of here. Oh, oh. We're just below the high street now. Mm -hmm. You see anything, Inspector? No, not a thing. Have you uh, noticed something, though? No. Look at the water. Good Lord! Dead rats! Look at them all. There must be about a dozen of them. Yeah, well, that's why I was a bit surprised to see that one alive when we first came down. These things have been floating on top of the water all the way along. In which case, we can expect the worst. Yeah. Uh, where does this alley lead to? Dead end, I should think. There must be quite a few exits down here. Up in nearly every street. Uh, hey, that's funny. What? Over there. What is it? Do you hear anything? Not a thing. Put your ear up against the wall. No, nope. sir. There. You can hear it now. Yes. It... Somebody breathing. Quick. Shine the torch, buddy. Yeah. What's your thing? Not a damn thing. Give me the torch. I want to look down this alley. Those rats, there must be dozens of them floating in the water. Yeah. Have you noticed the colour of the water now? No dirty green. You ask me, the best thing we can do is to get a... That's right. Get quick, quick torch. Where? I don't know of you. There. Someone crouching on the ground. Oh. It, it, it's a woman. You there. Hey, you. Hey, who are you? What are you doing down here? Hey? Now, don't be scared. I'm not going to hurt you. Hey! Come back! Come back! Inspector! Yeah. Look, there are more of them. Look on the other side. Where? Look, they're, they're all huddled together around the bottom of the steps. A whole lot of them crouching on the floor. Look at the faces. They're, they're watching. Do you see their eyes? They're watching. What are you doing? Get out of here, all of you. Do you hear me? What is it? What are you trying to say, old man? Hey? Who are you? What are you doing down here? It's Becca! It's Becca! Come on! Look at the mud! It's all over the walls! Come on! Let's get out of here! Hypnotism? That's quite an hypothesis, Doctor. I hope you know what you're saying. Professor, there are many people who believe that hypnotism can be a great aid to medical treatment. And do you? Well, I prefer to keep an open mind. What you're suggesting, Doctor, is that by means of hypnotism, the mud is exercising some kind of mental pressure on the human mind, eh? I think it's a possibility. Then ah. why only certain types of people? Couldn't it do the same to all of us? Well, hypnotism is only accepted by the mind which is susceptible to it. It couldn't penetrate a human mind whose willpower is against it. This would also account for the death of wildlife and plant life. The mental pressure will be too great for them. Exactly. But if all this is true, what's the mud's objective? Is it purely to destroy? Ultimately, yes. But if it is to destroy the surface of the earth, first of all, it must eliminate human habitation. And the only way to do this is by mental domination. Precisely. It must prove to its subjects that it is the new creator of life. And that the only way to that new life is through death. But that's almost exactly what Deverell said. Deverell? And the only effective way to destroy human life is to persuade it to destroy itself. Suicide. Mm, that seems feasible. It's an almost obvious conclusion to all these depressions. Then how? Well, when it is ready, 
draw everything towards it. In the first case, it would be easy to gain control of a mind that is either senile or infirm. Hence your great number of patients, Doctor, and especially those missing from the hospital wards. So you think, Joseph, when the time comes, these people are just going to throw themselves into the mud like human sacrifices? What a terrifying thought. Look, we've got to stop them. Whatever we do, we've got to stop them. We'll stop them all right, Doctor. If and when we can find them. Joseph! But, John, what's happened? They're all down there, the whole lot of what? them. We've got to get them out. What are you talking about? Who's down there? Those people from the hospital. What? And a good few more. We were down in the sewer. The whole place is crawling, alive with them. A whole sea of faces just... just there. You mean these people are hiding down there in the sewer? Yes, they're like frightened mice, bunched together in the darkness, crouching on the floor. Oh, no. Terrifying. Those, those faces, yellow and half dead. We must get them out immediately. It's impossible. They're trapped. Trapped. Yes, there's mud streaming down the walls. I, I don't know where it's coming from. They're completely cut off. The inspector and I had to run for our lives. But, John, it's daytime. The mud is solid now. Surely it's no Go day. and look for yourself how safe it is. I tell you, that stuff down there is alive. We dare not go near it. Joseph, do you realize what this means? They're being collected together down there. The whole lot of them. Yes, Robert. They're being collected. Now all they have to do is wait. You? You, can you hear me? I'm going now. The men will be here in a few minutes. I've collected together as many things as I can. You, did you hear? I said I'm going. Yes, I heard you. I sent Maggie away. I told her that whatever happened, I wouldn't go without you. That was the right thing to do, wasn't it, darling? Why are you standing in the doorway? Are you so scared of me? Of course not. Why should I be scared of you? You're my husband. Well, close it, then. Go on. Close the door. Yes, you. Now, come over here, my dear. You, darling. We haven't the time. I've told you the men will be here at any moment. Why don't you put on your coat and let's go? Over here. It's getting dark outside, darling. We shan't be able to see anything. There's no electricity. What's wrong with the dark? Don't you find it relaxing? Please, darling. I sit here, at the side of me. There, that's better. Hands. They're so warm. You're so pretty. So beautifully smooth. And then you're a very beautiful woman, Anna. You always were. I'm sorry about Maggie, darling. I didn't know she was going to do that. I didn't know she was going to open those curtains. Really, I didn't. I know you prefer the dark. Mm. You know what, my... Father used to do when I was a child, if ever I displeased him just once. He'd lock me in the cellar, in the darkness. A small child, all alone, master of his own little world. It was a very strange feeling. Sometimes I could sense the spiders crawling down the walls. I couldn't see them, but I knew they were there all right. I remember I used to sit on my stool in the darkness and suddenly I would feel this thing crawling slowly up my bare leg. But I would move, not an inch. I would sit there for as long as I could without taking any notice of it. Then it would stop still on my leg almost hear the two of us in the darkness trying to decide what to do next. The spider always went, and I was always the winner. I suppose it was a sort of game, maybe. That's why I'm not scared of the dark. You? Let's go. Stay with me. No, I told you. Stay. Please, let me go. 
Joe, you're hurting me. I can't see you anymore, but at least like this we're equal. Don't struggle, my dear. You and I were meant to stay together. We should never be apart. Joe, you're hurting me. Now, this is your chance to prove to me that these years haven't all been wasted. Oh. Our chance, Anna, to go hand in hand into a new creation. You and me, Anna. You and me. That's the main post office, I think. Probably it was a gas main explosion down below. I'm not surprised. I don't think my nerves can stand it much more of this. You know, we'll have to clear that laboratory if this goes on much longer. It's getting too close for comfort. When the devil is all this going to stop? That's what a lot of people would like to know. I beg your pardon. It's Professor Lander, isn't it? Yes. Well, I'm Margaret Griffiths from the Home Office. Ah, Miss Griffiths. Uh, this is my colleague, Professor Gomez. Professor. How do you do, Miss Griffiths? Ah, it's a pretty sight, isn't it? Did you know this was to have been some sort of show place for Redlow? <laughs> Our postmaster general ought to see it now. So, gentlemen, what do you intend to do? Do? Well, do you want us to sit tight and see the town crumble all around us? Is that the idea? Miss Griffiths, you've been working night and day to try and find the cause of this outbreak. It's not the cause we're interested in, Professor. It's a remedy we want. A way to save this town. Professor Gordon, you were called in because of your superior knowledge of geological disturbances. Haven't you even the faintest idea how to get rid of this stuff? No, Miss Griffiths, I'm afraid I have not. Then somebody must have. There are scientists down here from all parts. Some of them must know what to do. Miss Griffiths, to our knowledge, what has happened here in Redlow is something that has never before been experienced in the history of mankind. Now, somewhere beneath the surface of this tired earth, there is a hard core. How far down, we may never know, but it is our enemy. Its aim is to destroy us to crush whatever human life is left after, after all this. Now this mud, Miss Griffiths, it is the army of that core. And make no mistake about it, if we allow it to spread, it will not stop here. Then what you said at that press conference last night... Was, was quite true. We are no longer fighting a geological disruption, Miss Griffiths. This is war. War between two human minds. It's a battle of the giants. And one of them is more powerful than we had ever dared imagine. Well, Professor, what do you need? Uh, something I'm afraid that nobody can give us. Time. We must have time to find out who or what is the real enemy of this... this monster. Brained idea of yours. These sewers are absolutely full of mud. For heaven's sake, let's turn back. It's too dangerous. I can't. I've got to find Janet. Look, what sort of a person do you think I'd be if I just went off and left her to die down here? It's all right, but I'm going no further than the end of this block. The first alley where we saw them is just on the left. Now, keep your back to the wall, and whatever you do, don't move without me. It's so light and dark down here, you can't see it. Stop! Someone there. I can hear the breathing. Yes. Look there, right ahead. It's a girl. Janet, come back. Janet, you want to get us a kill? Give me the torch. I'll tell you, it's his hair. Doctor, Doctor. Janet. Doctor, come back. Janet. Doctor, the mother's got in front of her. Doctor. Mrs. Deverell, I, I came as soon as I got your message. Now, what has happened? Hugh tried to kill me. What? He made me go in and sit beside him in the dark. It was terrible. He was like a maniac. Where is he now? I don't know. I stood in the drawing room, I think. It was a miracle how I managed to get away from him. All I could do was to run out of the house as fast as I could. There was a soldier on duty at the end of the road, and I told him to find you. The terrible noises coming from that room. So the whole place were being torn to pieces. You wait here. No, Joseph, you must know. He'll kill you. Now, give me the oil lamp. Right. Now, keep back. Mr. Deverill? Mr. Deverill? Are you in there? All right, Mr. Deverill, you can come in. He's not here. That's strange. I didn't hear him go. <coughs> Joseph, look at the room. What's he done? Look, is there another way out? The 
the door in the corner. It leads oh. straight out into the garden. Cactus, they're torn to shreds. And the furniture. Oh, I can't see anything. She must have gone. Now, look, Mrs. Deverell, you must leave here immediately. He just sat here in the darkness. I couldn't see him, but I knew his eyes were watching me all the time. When his hand touched me, it was cold like ice. But what made him try to kill you? I don't know. It all happened so quickly. He grabbed hold of my throat and started to squeeze. I felt the life draining out of me. Oh, he must hate me very much. No, no, no. What you see in your husband now is a, a puppet. He's no longer able to think for himself. He's so alone. I think most of all, that's the thing I can't bear. We shall get him back, Mrs. Devil. Him and all those other people. We must. Jeremy. Look at me, darling. Don't you know me? For heaven's sake, man, don't take another step. The bus active, waiting for you to move in. Janet, oh, cut. Please. please. She's a prisoner. Look at her face, her eyes. She doesn't even know me. She can't hear you, man. She's only allowed to obey one voice. It's a trick to get you over there. Now, whatever you do, I don't do it. Don't leave her down here like this. Look, she's under command. She doesn't know you, doesn't want to. Look, once you try to make contact, that stuff is going to go for both her and us. Janet, listen to me, darling. I'm going to take you away from here, out of this place. Now, if you keep perfectly still, I can just lift you across. No, Doctor, no. Janet, listen to me. To me! Now, give me your hand. Don't be a fool, ma'am, please. Janet, please. That's it, darling. That's it. Now, just a little... Bit further. Go on, you can do it. Don't do it, Doctor. There's a pressure. Can't you feel it in your head? There's a pressure. Fingertips are almost touching. I've got you, darling. I've almost got you. Move it, Doctor. Don't touch. You are moving towards us. Please. That was episode six of The Slide by Victor Pemberton, with Morris Denham as Hugh Deverell, MP, and Roger Delgado as Joseph Gomez. The part of Professor Landers was played by Rolf Lefever, Dr. Ken Richards by David Spencer, Anna Deverell by Marion Mathie, and Professor Lippert by Alan McClelland. Inspector Baxter, Geoffrey Matthews, Sergeant Johnson, Wilfred Babbage, Margaret Griffiths, MP, Joan Matheson, RAF Corporal Anthony Hall, Mrs. Luke Noel Hood. Other parts were played by members of the BBC Drama Repertory Company. Special sound was by the BBC Radiophonic Workshop, and the recorded production was by John Tideman. Slide, a science fiction serial in seven parts by Victor Pemberton, with Morris Denham and Roger Delgado. The Slide, episode seven, Out of the Darkness. The lost people of Redlow, Newtown, are found hiding in the darkness of the sewer tunnels beneath the deserted streets. In the main square above, Inspector Baxter waits anxiously for Dr. Richards and Professor Lippert. Any sign on them? No, sir, not yet. Just the two of them, you said. Lippert and the doctor, is that right? Yes, sir. I've been listening for the last two hours. I haven't heard a thing. Sounds dead down there. Trouble is, these sewers stretch for miles. Mm. Okay, Sarge. We'll give them another ten minutes or so. Then we'd better go and get some kip. If yeah. you want to risk our own necks, let them. We've had enough wondering about those tunnels down there. Anyway, <sighs> it'll be sun up in a few minutes. I wish he'd pack that up. Sounds like a funeral dirge. We all have our own way of showing feelings, Sarge. The vicar's been in that church for 15 years. I reckon he's got the right to ring his bell if he wants. It's not feeling that's going to save this town, not now. Look at the place. Never think it was Tuesday morning, would you? <laughs> Market day. More like a battlefield. They'll build again. If they get the chance. Well, they got to. They just have. Anyway, I'd sooner listen to his bell than hang on here in the silence. I think it's that that 
scares me more than anything else. Silence. I'd give anything to hear the birds singing away in those trees again. Inspector! They're here! Oh, quick. Give them the hat. Come on, let them Let's Let's Hold on. Come on. Right, I got you. Hold on now. Right, Doctor. Give me your hand. I'll pull you up. Thank you. Come on now. That's it. There we go. Fresh air. Oh, thank goodness. You've been down there for hours. We were just about to give you up. It takes all our time to find a way out. By tonight, those tunnels are going to be choked with mud. What about Miss Marshall, Doc? Any signs? Yes. She's down there. What? There's no way to get her out. She was cut off from us. We couldn't take the risk. I could have reached her. Oh, you try to get any of those poor devils down there. The, the mud will get you just like so them. we just leave them all down there. Old and young alike to rot away until that stuff's ready for them. Isn't your conscience big enough to take that responsibility, Professor? Because mine isn't. Ken, we have no alternative. The only way we can help them now is to find some way to break through this influence or whatever it is that the mud has over them. You say them? Have you any idea how many? Impossible to tell. 30, 40 maybe, even more. The sewers are crawling with them. They crouch in corners, hiding from us, guarded by their jailer, lost, dazed. And, oh, I felt so helpless, knowing they were there and not being able to do a thing for them. Well, I tell you this much, Professor. Somebody's got to, that's for sure. We've done all we can. Robert? Mm. Robert, wake up. Oh, I'm sorry, old boy. Must have dropped off for a few minutes. An hour and a half to be exact. It's 7.30. Oh, is it really? Oh, well, when you get to my age, you need your rest. <laughs> Any luck yet? No. The mud sample in the tank's been on the move most of the night. The only interesting thing that seems to have happened is the, the rock salt particles have disappeared from the side of the tank, you see? Yes. Look at the wretched stuff. It's much bigger than it was last night. Oh, at least three or four times, I'd say. You know, we'll have to get rid of it soon. It's too dangerous to keep in here for much longer. You know, that bubbling really is like volcanic lava, isn't it? Mm. Reminds me of some of those eruptions I saw in New Zealand. Would you like to blow out the lamp, Robert? Yes, certainly. I'll raise the blinds. You know, we could do with some fresh air in here. Ah, I know. This light's a strain on the eyes. Oh, it's a beautiful day. There's hardly a cloud in the sky. You know, if someone had told me they had such sunlit days in England, I would never have believed them. <laughs> Better? Much better. Uh, and let's hope the heavens are with us today. If they could just send us some wind, a little breeze. Mm. Everything is so still, so lifeless, so unreal. Mm. We could be a boat in the middle of an ocean. Judith, quick! What is it? Look at the mud sample. Look! Uh, let me... Robert! Absolutely incredible. I was watching it. I watched it transform in front of my very eyes. But it, it's solid again. Completely solid. Of course, Robert. Of course! Inspector. Inspector Baxter. Mrs. Deverell, well, what are you doing here? That town's out of bounds to all civilian personnel. Inspector, you've got to find my husband. Mrs. Deverell, take a look around you, will you, please? There are 1,500 blokes trying to clear this stuff from the streets. I'm warning you. He may be dangerous. Dangerous? In his present condition, he's capable of doing anything. Who isn't? Inspector. He tried to kill me. He what? He doesn't know what he's doing. Don't you see, we can't hold him responsible for his actions. We've got to try and reach him before he does anything dangerous. When did this happen, please? Last night, just before 11. Then he ran out of the house. You've no idea where he was heading. None at all, but he took his car. He was no killer. He'd never want to harm me. There's something inside him that's pushing him to the borders of insanity, some evil force that, that's taken him over completely. Inspector, I beg you to get him back before it's too late. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. You have to turn around. The road's blocked from now on. Get that thing out of my way. I'm going into Red Lowe. Oh, I'm very sorry, sir. The town's out of bounds to all civilian personnel until further notice. If you want permission to... Oh, what's the matter with you? What are you looking at? You, your face, sir. You all right? I am perfectly all right now. Will you get out of my way? Well, it's scratched, sir. You, you, you're bleeding. Uh, let me get you to a doctor. I don't need a doctor. I don't need anyone. I've got to get into that town, and I've got to get in quickly. They need me. 
me. Don't you understand that? They need me. Turn your car around, please, sir. Damn it, man. Don't you know who I am? No, sir, I do not. My orders is that no one passes this barrier without permission from my commanding officer. It's oh. not my business to know who you are, yes. sir. So you'll be saving yourself a lot of time and trouble if you just turn right round and go back where you come from. Uh. And if you take my tip, sir, you see a doctor as soon as you can, and them scratches look as though they need it. Uh, hey, what uh, the heck are you doing? Now, are you going to get out of my way? Put that gun down. Are you mad? Uh, <laughs> the sun, my friends, the sun. Don't you see? The answer has been up there in the sky all the time. At last we know the real enemy of the mud. So what you're saying, Professor, is that during daylight, the mud is forming some sort of hard crust to protect itself from the heat of the sun. No, no, Miss Griffiths, not the heat. That's where we've been following the wrong course. The reason our own generated heat test failed. Here, let me show you what I mean on the blackboard. The light. The rays of the sun itself. Oh, yes, but what does it all mean? It means that somewhere in the solar system there's a filament of light capable of penetrating the mud's pores. Yes, but only when those pores are open, when they are breathing. And that's during the night. Precisely. That's the only time it is safe to shed its protective crust. Now, all through the night, this laboratory has been in darkness, except for one small oil lamp. We watch the organic movement in this small mud sample multiply beyond recognition. But... Immediately I came over to this window and raised the blinds. That organic light came to a halt in front of our very eyes. The sun we should have realized before. So what you're suggesting, Joseph, is it's some kind of battle between the mud and the sun? Yes. But why? Well, throughout the history of mankind, there have always been people who prayed to the sun as a kind of god, the creator of heaven and earth. You only have to look at something like the Inca civilization, the worship of the sun god. The sun is the creator. But I don't see what this has got to do with the mud. Look, if we are to believe that the mud is a living thing, capable of generating its own influence on human life, then we must also believe that if the mud is to claim the earth for itself, it must first destroy everything on the earth created by the sun. Nature, my friends, has turned this into a psychological warfare. Dr. Richards, you've had a chance to see those people hiding down the sewers. What do you think the effects are likely to be? I don't think there's any doubt. The mud intends to absorb the human mind, take it into its confidence by means of hypnotic transference, and then eliminate it, I suppose. Do you mean to tell me that out of all the scientific knowledge man has acquired, he can't come up with anything to prevent this extermination? There is something, hmm? but it may not work. Oh, for heaven's sake, man, we've got to try. What is it? The, the mud is like a giant octopus. Its head, the nerve center, is somewhere beneath the surface of the earth. We must find a way to burn through the tentacles, the thousands of little brain cells that are causing this multiplication. Yes, but how? Strike at a time when it is unable to protect itself, when the pores are wide open. During the night. As soon as the sun sets. Yes, but what do we strike with? We can't build a sun in the middle of the night. We don't have to build a sun, Robert. Look, look at the diagram on the board again. Now tell me. Which of the spectrums in the solar system would you say is the most likely to penetrate into the mud's pores? Couldn't be ultraviolet, especially if there were any cloud around. Uh, anyway, it's not nearly deep enough. Uh, what about infrared? Yes, Doctor? Well, that's about the deepest ray there is. Now, if you could harness enough... Yes, but how? Well, there's a pretty strong infrared filament in xenon discharge lamps. Ah. They use them in most photographic or film studios. If you could get your hands on some of those... Oh, you'd need hundreds of the things to cover the entire town. No, no. We could take it in sections. If the first experiment works, we can repeat it. Miss Griffiths, what can you do for us? How many would you need, uh, these lamps? Well, to start with, I should say, 20. Mm. We could line the edge of Holly Mill Lane, but they must be installed by sunset this evening. Don't worry. You'll have them. I, I warn you, they're pretty powerful, these lamps. I should think they'll light up the whole sky. Yes, as long as that is all they do, Doctor, I shan't worry. What do you mean? I don't have to remind you what happened the last time we used generated heat. Even the most minute particle of mud expanded beyond all proportions. If this should happen again, the dangers would be greater than we dare imagine. You mean the whole thing may multiply? Quicker than ever before. There isn't just one. There are thousands of living organisms lying out there in that mud. 
This experiment may only succeed in increasing them. Increasing them? But you are a scientist. Don't you know? Miss Griffiths, I am afraid I do not. Unfortunately, there are times when even a scientist just does not know. Not so good. Anyway, we've got a description. Devereaux. Yes, it's him all right. His car smashed through that barrier like a bulldozer. I reckon you were right after all. He's trying to make it to those sewers. Ah, ah it's all right now, Corporal, old son. You just lie still. You're going to be all right. You have to get him before he gets there. He's going to them. Who's he going to, son? Who? Him is going to them. Try and remember who it was. <laughs> better get him to hospital. He's lost quite a lot of blood. What was this he said about Devil's face? Scratch marks all over. And there were some dead birds and things on the back seat of his car. We'll put out a general alarm to pick up Devil, dead or alive. Dead or... Inspector, we can't do that. We don't have the authority to shoot to kill. You know that. Dead or alive, Sergeant. And that's an order. Murder. Cold-blooded murder to fire at innocent people like that. They are not firing at them. They are firing above their heads to keep them away from those sewers. Once they got down there, we'd never see them again. But they're wandering around like lost souls. Can't somebody do something? Get them out. The only thing we can do is to keep them away from the mud. In their present state of hypnotic influence, if we try to touch one of them, there's no knowing what the shock might do. We dare not take the risk. It's all like a bad dream. You know... You're not helping yourself or anyone by staying here, Mrs. Devereux. They'll do that to him, won't they? Shoot him down. That's nonsense and you know it. Nobody's going to shoot your husband. It's our help he needs. Oh, it's all right. It won't make any difference to me. In fact, after seeing him the way he was last night, maybe it would be a good thing. I don't believe you. Don't you? I don't believe you really hate him as much as you pretend. You can't shut him out of your life as easily as that. You can't shut out the world. I don't need you to tell me that, Professor. But for one moment, early this morning, I thought I had. I was up there on the hill overlooking the town. Oh, I know everything seemed to look exactly the same, even though I knew it wasn't. But, but there was a moment, one brief moment, when the world be became a blur. It didn't exist anymore. People places, things. And I was happy, very happy, alone in a vast wilderness. But soon I focused again. I found it quite a shock to see I wasn't alone after all. The world was still there. But I... I wish it wasn't. Joseph! Joseph! The RAF are sending in three lorries from Maidstone. They're coming through now. With the equipment? Enough lamps to cover the whole of Holly Mill Lane. Good. The electricians say they must have at least 45 minutes to synchronize the entire circuit from Maidstone. Now, what time is it now? Exactly 5.30. The sun goes down at 6.38. Can we make it? 68 minutes. Hmm. Gentlemen, those lamps go on at sunset or the battle is lost. What's up, soldier? Noises. What sort of noises? Down there, the, the sewers. I don't know what those ginks are up to, but it, it's peculiar, like they're, they're, they're shuffling about or something. Wh whispering. Whispering? Yeah, give me a funny feeling, so, sort of unsettled. I've, I had to put the lid back on. Teach you to be nosy. Well, it's not my idea of fun, Sarge. I can tell you, sitting here alone in a back street, God in a hole in the middle of the road, waiting, waiting for something to happen. Nothing's going to happen, at least not for another quarter of an hour or so. Once they get those lights on, then you could look for a few sparks. I... What? There it is again. What? Quick! Give me a hammer to lead! Now, listen. For heaven's sake, get someone! Please!
side of the lane are of extreme high density. You should protect your eyes from the glare and keep well back from the experimental area. We rely on your cooperation. Thank you. Dr. Richards. Dr. Richards. Hmm? Is it true what they're saying? Uh, Mrs. Devereaux, what's the matter? Are these lights going to kill the people down in the sewers? Uh, Mrs. Devereaux. Tell me, I want to know. I don't know. I only wish I did. But how, in heaven's name, how? Well, Gomez seems to think that if the light does penetrate the mud's brain cells, it might do the same to the human mind. It's a chance we've got to take. And you mean to tell me that you, a doctor, are going to let them do it? Yeah. Let them kill off all those defenseless people? We have no alternative, Mrs. Devereaux. And anyway, we don't know this is going to happen, not until the actual moment the lamps are turned on. Look, my own fiance Janet, is down there. Do you think I'd, I wouldn't put a stop to this if I thought anything would happen? They say his face was scratched from top to bottom. Why, Doctor, why? What's happened to your husband, Mrs. Devil? There's a tragic breakdown of resistance. Oh, he's a strong-willed man. But that's why one side of his brain is in direct conflict with the other. Like, like the meeting of two parts of a schizophrenic. Oh. One hand refuses to do what the other one wants it to. And unless we can stop it, the part of his mind controlled by the mud intends to destroy the other part. It's down there, somewhere, I know it. And all those other people who didn't ask for this. But if we want them back again, Mrs. Deverell, we have to kill that mud. You know that. Three minutes to count down. Stand well back, please. What's happening, sir? Can't see a thing. It's so dark down there. I've got some matches. No, no, no. If they see a light, they'll probably scarp her. Can't take any chances now. How long's this been going on? About half an hour, you said that. Hello? What? He's gone. Well, who's gone? That soldier. He was here on guard duty. I hope he's not. Now I come to think of it, he was acting a bit funny himself. Any minute now, that sky's going to be lit up like a bomb. Reminds you of the Blitz, don't it? Shh. What is it? There's somebody there. Quick, line your stomach and don't say a word. They're coming out. Look at them. The whole lot, Inspector. We've got to do something. We've got to get hold of them. See where you are. Once they're out, they're out for good. Something's making them move out of there. But their faces. Look at their faces. Where are they going, Inspector? Where are they going? Joseph, there are small cracks appearing in the surface of the road in the main square. The engineers have just told me. So we were right, eh? The middle of the circle. All five sides are going to meet. But what does that mean? It means, Miss Griffiths, that if we miss our chance tonight, all five banks of mud are going to become one. By morning, the whole town will be swamped. It'll give way like matchwood. But will we have time to stop the other overflows? Once we know the infrared can reach the nerve center of its brain, the growth will stop. But if it continues to move, even with the flood of light on it, then look Joseph. out... Joseph, you've got to stop those lights. You've got to. And now, what is it? If he turns them on, every one of those people down in the sewers are going to die. Mrs. Deverell, you are hysterical. Please get out of the way. If you kill the mud, you kill all those poor people with it. Professor, is this true? Of course it's true. Go on, tell them. Tell them what a murderer you are. Professor Gomez, I, I didn't know about this. Perhaps we'd better postpone the whole thing. You're too late. Look, the sun's almost gone. <laughs> and now, all faces, all thoughts are one as we turn our eyes towards that great ball of fire slipping majestically behind the hillside above us. The moment is near. Figures turn to silhouettes as the deep red glow becomes twilight. The sun is gone. And now, the silence. Wait a minute. Something's happening out there. Yes, to the right of your picture, ladies and gentlemen. Someone has run out. He's in the middle of the mud overflow. Oh, that damn fool devil, what's he doing out there? Devil in the mud is going to change any moment. Get out of there. Don't come near me. Don't touch me. You won't be able to hurt me anymore. None of you! Oh, mad. The poor Come devil's on. gone completely mad. Look at his face. Somebody get him out of there. Keep away from the mud. There's nothing we can do. Okay, sir, Don't let them down. I'm Joseph. Devil, 
Now listen to me. You are in great danger. The mud wants to kill you. No longer do we have to look to the sun. At last, we are being given the chance to destroy the evil created by man. A chance to destroy the evil that is in us, in you and me, and all of us who have allowed this corruption. Devil! You've got to believe me, the mud is evil. The only thing it wants is your destruction. Somebody do something. We can't leave him out there to die. We can't go out there. It's too dangerous. The mud's not moving yet. Perhaps it's not going to. We can't take the chance. If we don't get those lamps on the moment the mud's pores open, they, they'll close up immediately like an oyster. Quiet, please, Maggie, don't let them do it. Please, don't let There's them do it. There's nothing we can do. What's he doing now? He's turned to the crowd. Man was never given the earth. He took it for himself. He used the sun to help him create his own lust for power, his greed, his evil. But now, now we are free to think for ourselves. We can destroy this evil right here and now. You and me. No, devil, no. Follow me. Follow me off this path of corruption. Look at the clouds. The people from the zones. Keep them back. They're trying to reach him. The mud. Keep those people away. The mud's beginning to move. Keep back. Keep back. See, the organisms are increasing. Joseph, the mud's already over the marker line. Do we move back the lamps? No. But they might explode. Keep them where they are. We'll keep the fire running as long as we can. Uh, get a party of men down here. For the time being, we can divert the flow. It's happening, isn't it? The light really is multiplying the mud's organisms. Unless we can block the flow, there's no doubt that within two or three hours, they're going to meet right in the center of the town. And for heaven's sake, why doesn't somebody turn off those lamps? No. Joseph, look. Something's happening. What's that red glow the other end? Don't you see? It's burning. The whole lot's catching fire all the way along. Look, look at the marker line. The mud's shriveling up. Oh, it's horrible. Horrible. <laughs> it's not horrible. It's not horrible, Miss Griffith. It's wonderful. The most wonderful thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Thank heavens we got those poor people from the sewers in time. If those people in the crowd hadn't stopped them, we were lucky, that's all. Ah, oh, do you think so, sir? What do you mean, Inspector? Well, I was just looking around, that's all. Somehow I don't feel very lucky. It's funny, isn't it? When you think what difference a few days can make to your life. Oh, I've no doubt once I got rid of the rest of the mud, they'll soon put this town together again. But I'll never feel the same when I walk through those streets again. I must say, I'm looking forward to hearing those birds sing again. Yes, and I intend to be a sun worshipper for the rest of my life. <laughs> well, Doctor, how's Miss Marshall? Well, I've sent her back to hospital. If she stays there this time, I think she'll pull through. Well, I was terrified when I saw her trying to reach the mud. She was fighting like a maniac to get there. Yes. You see, when the infrared finally penetrated the mud's nerve center, this immediately snapped the hypnotic influence over the human brain. The sudden release of energy on these people must have been tremendous. And um, Deverell? I'm afraid not. We were too late. Is all this ever going to happen again, Professor? 
Well, if you mean, are we likely to have another earthquake, young man, I suggest you ask Mother Nature. She always seems to have a little something tucked up her sleeve. <laughs> oh, I have no doubt. We shall go on dropping our bombs and fighting each other. But when nature's tired of all this, I can assure you, she knows exactly when to show her disapproval. You are going home, Mrs. Devlin? Home? What home? I, um, I had hoped it would never be like this. I, I would have done anything to prevent that it. That last moment, when he stumbled and fell. He looked so lost, so old, unreal. There was a moment when I thought he recognized me. I remember Hugh, when he had a warm sense of humor, he could laugh louder than anyone. I never wanted him to die. There was so much I wanted to say. We have nothing to say, Joseph. Not now. Not anymore. Goodbye. Goodbye, Anna. But Joseph, they've moved the lamps over the other side of the town. They'll have most of it clear by morning. Well, don't look so gloomy. We've won a battle, you know. Have we? Well, haven't we? I wonder. Maybe it's just the beginning. Oh, come off it, old boy. I've had quite enough for one week, thanks all the same. But we have stopped the mud, haven't we? Oh, the mud? Yes, I think so. Well, then. Robert, my friend, we have won a battle, yes. We have managed this time to face something that man has always feared, the unknown. But for how long, I wonder? You remember what Deverell said about... Man's insatiable lust for domination. Well, maybe he was right. Maybe one day either we or nature are going to unleash something that we know nothing about. Whether it is in, in the seas, in the atmosphere, or in the bowels of the earth. And the next time, what will we do? What will we do the next time? <laughs> That was the seventh and final episode of The Slide by Victor Pemberton, with Morris Denham as Hugh Deverell, MP, and Roger Delgado as Joseph Gomez. The part of Professor Landers was played by Rolf Lefevre, Dr. Ken Richards by David Spencer, Anna Deverell by Marion Mathey, and Professor Lippert by Alan McClelland. Inspector Baxter, Geoffrey Matthews, Sergeant Johnson, Wilfred Babbage, RAF Corporal, Anthony Hall, Margaret Griffiths, MP, Joan Matheson, TV interviewer Henry Stamper. Other parts were played by members of the BBC Drama Repertory Company. Special sound was by the BBC Radiophonic Workshop 